Whew, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to the Gaijin Sanctuary, and you're watching another episode of... The camera is a little too low. You're watching another episode of Japan Storytimes, the only Japan vlogging show where I still have my microphone and a cup because I'm too lazy slash cautious with money to buy an actual mic arm. Okay, if I like sit back, then the top of my head isn't getting cut off, but like... There's nothing down there you need to see. It's fine. <laughs> right? Is this shot, does that shot still look good? I still have my issue with the sunglasses that can't, like, see the computer. If I'm looking at it like this, I have to look at it at an angle. See, I still don't know how that works. <laughs> this is the third episode, and I still don't know how that works. <laughs> anyway, today is special vacation times where I have a bunch of dumb souvenirs to show off. Uh, and... It's Japan related because it's I went to different places in Japan specifically specifically I'm, I'm finally glad that I was able to explore like where I live <laughs> like basically like the Fukushima and uh, Sendai area Miyagi area most most specific most people just know it as the Sendai area even though Sendai is just a city in Miyagi but uh, you, you get the idea the, the the Fukushima Sendai slash Miyagi area because yeah, I don't know. Ever since I got here in August, I've just been like super busy and not not have good transportation. But uh, my family came down and we rented a car and we just drove around and it was cool. And we also spent some time in Tokyo and got to, and I bought way too much stuff because uh, this is like the first vacation that I've had where I've had like a job with money. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. The first time I went to Japan uh, back in. Like, the first time I went, I visited for, like, two weeks back in 2015. Yeah, it was, like, the summer after Smash 4 came out, so 2015. Um, I had, like, a part-time... I just got off a part-time job, so I had some money then. But, like, this I have, like... I was still being cautious because, like, I had a limited supply of money. And here I have a job for at least a, a, a couple of years. So, you know... <laughs> But I was still, I still didn't, like, I didn't spend as much as, like, I could have, obviously. Like, I, I got a bunch of little, little tiny cheap stuff. Because <laughs> I like accumulated, elating things. Also, say hi to my daughter. She's not, she doesn't, she just wants to watch. She doesn't, she's not gonna say too much. She just, uh, she just wants to watch. Also, an, an otter. Because, uh, I was just filling things in the background. Because I was thinking, oh man, this is, I need this shot because I need the, the, the table. I need this room laid out like this because I need the table here. Because that's where all the stuff is. But uh, I didn't want the shot to be too similar to the first shot. Or to the first episode. Because <laughs> this is very similar to the first episode. Ideally what I would do is I would have like... Giant like poster boards or something. Or like a table in the background. That I can just constantly like rotate. So I don't need to keep moving the couch. Or like maybe have like a chair that I... I've, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but uh, you know. It's, it's still, still a work in progress. It's still a work in progress. That's my main thing that I would have wanted to avoid with this series is uh, repetition because that's why I haven't done like a series kind of like this before because I was worried I how to like keep it fresh and I, I'm still working on it. So today we're going to do uh, talking about vacation stuff. But uh, first I did want to actually clarify something I said on the first episode where I was talking about like never giving up trying to improve my life and I was like oh yeah I'm not going to be content with just staying at the current place that I'm at. I'm going to work hard and go to the next part but like that's not to say that I'm not that I'm not like never gonna be happy right because like if there's always something to improve on like I'm never gonna stop until either I achieve become God and achieve a perfect universe or I die whatever happens first so like yeah obviously I'm I'm happy you know like each level is to make myself more happy and more comfortable and you know so like just because, like, this current job, like, this current, my current situation isn't the best yet. It's still a lot better than college, because college effing sucks. I hate, I hated college so goddamn much. You have no idea. So, I'm definitely infinitely happier to not do that, even if this isn't perfect. That's all, that's all I wanted to say, because there's, the, the, you could interpret what I said as, like, I'm never going to be happy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this time, we have a, I'm not going to be looking at my phone. I should be looking at my phone sometimes, because of the time, but, uh. I, pr I printed it out. I printed out the my notes, right? Half of it is uh, printed and half of it is after I printed it, I wrote down some notes. <laughs> so you can kind of see stuff there. But anyway, so basically the only thing other than the vacation that happened 
uh, between now and the last episode is uh, some stuff that happened after the vacation that will probably be on the next episode because that's it's still a uh, still in progress. And uh, I went to a mandatory health check, and basically like I just went there and I. My Japanese is like pretty good, but I don't know a lot of complicated doctor terms, so it was a little difficult. But uh, my conversational Japanese still like pushed me through. But uh, the most notable thing is uh, one of the doctors. He said like something. He like muttered something like in Japanese, and I was like, "What? What? What? What did you say? Can you repeat that?" And uh, he just pointed to my stomach and went, "Fa," and I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." Uh, Okay. Well, 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 okay. I'll give you that one, I suppose. <laughs> you know, if I under if I he muttered. It wasn't that I didn't don't he like used really long complicated terms and muttered them and then he immediately went from like level 100 Japanese to level two, 1 Japanese, you know. <laughs> Fat. But uh I don't know. I don't know how willing I am to believe him because uh when I checked uh how fat I was, like height uh weight ratio, uh, I was just slightly above uh what is considered normal and since then i have done nothing but l lose weight because i'm stressed <laughs> but uh that's normal you know i'm doing my best to stay healthy don't worry guys uh but uh i just think it's funny he just he just pointed at me and went fat he pointed specifically at my belly and went fat i just it's just one of those things you'll never forget anyway <laughs> Oh yeah. Also, something else I forgot. Here are the here are the special drinks we're gonna try out because uh, they're two like cherry drinks. This says cider and says something like twenty percent fruit. I can't see. Yeah, twenty percent fruit. And then this says I'm not too sure, but it, it's also peach. I assume because it has a peach on it, and it's a hundred percent juice. I'm assuming this is just peach juice. But uh, basically, like I need to drink these anyway because mm, the town that I live in is famous for peaches. And, uh, I just keep getting, I just keep accumulating peach stuff and I, and it needs to get gone. So here's the peach cider. This cap is like way, this hole is like way too small for my big American mouth. It's weird between like the Ramune bottles and like these small like holes, like Japanese soda is not made to like chug it like in America. It's also like the flavor is like also not made to chug. Anyway, yeah, that's good. I like it. It's like peach cider. It is a little carbonated. It's a bit weird. It's like it's like peach flavored soda, but without the um, the sugar that like I don't feel my teeth melting when I drink it. You know. Anyway, so let's uh, let's get a move on because we're already like eight-ish minutes in and i basically said nothing other than i'm fat apparently <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know I'm probably I'm probably not i don't know like because also like uh i don't know if like he's used to like if he accounted the fact that i'm a foreigner because like in japan a lot of people are like the same like height and body structure you know there's not a lot of variation so he might have just been looking at my weight and age and not factored in like my height at all so i, I don't know uh yeah i don't know i need to find a i need to find a doctor that uh is on that knows about foreigners <laughs> because uh yeah that's an issue if i die <laughs> or if i get a doubt with life threatening disease anyway so my family came up for about two weeks uh from december 20th to january 5th <laughs> so over christmas and new year's so yeah, that was pretty good, and also was convenient for me because I only had to. I think I uh, I had a week for New Year's, so I only had to take like four days for a holiday. So that was pretty sick, and also like I wouldn't have been teaching during those four days anyway because school was out, so it would just have been me sitting in the office. So that was it was good. I liked it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, December night nineteenth, the day before they got here, they got to Tokyo like that night and I like prepared my place I had like I did I redid my like whiteboard because I don't remember I think it's just some I was like scribbling some random motivational messages on my whiteboard before but then I changed it to have like a list that said welcome to the Gaijin Sanctuary and I made a little logo for it it was great uh I think I still have that so I could grab it but uh I'll just I'll just show the picture the picture will come out nicer anyway 
So yeah, and I also I like I cleaned up the place because it was like four people. Okay, it was uh my mom, my sister, and my mom's boyfriend and my mom's boyfriend's son. <laughs> I think this is the first time I'm talking about this, but like you know we I I've known him long enough for uh to just kind of be like a friend of the family. You know, it's good. I like it. It's I, I I'm a fan of uh mommy's new boyfriend. <laughs> Because uh, he knows about memes, so anyone anyone who knows about memes gets an A gets an A plus in my book. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, and also uh, yeah, they were they were fun to, they were fun to hang out with. <laughs> they they are fun to hang out with. I knew them before I left and uh, continue to keep in contact with them. So yeah, very good, very good. It was it was very difficult to explain that to people that I met because like people at my like school and work and stuff. Or that at the school slash work wanted to like meet them, so I was like, "Oh, this is my family: my mom, my sister, and uh, her fling, <laughs> her fling, my mom's fling, and my mom's fling's son." And uh, so that got that got a couple of, of raised eyebrows. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so on December twentieth, uh, they drove, they rent, they got the car in Tokyo, and then they drove from Tokyo to Fukushima, which would took like four or five hours i think and that friday i was still like at work so like and the plan was like they would show up and then i would get off work and uh they got here before i got off work so they just kind of screwed around in the grocery store for a couple hours and by a couple hours i think like an hour <laughs> because i i got it because in addition to them being early i also had to like meet with my boss after work because uh we officially signed the papers saying that i can be here another year so that's that's pretty sick because generally how it is, is like with my contract, it's like generally the average is like three years and four or five years if uh, they really like you. But like it's not like you still have to recontract every year. It's not guaranteed. So like in case like at some point like either party feels like it's not working out. So like, yeah, so I was only contracted for one year. And then so they're like, hey, you want to you want to stay here another year? And I'm like, yeah, I like it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far. It's not perfect, but I see a lot of potential. So, yeah, it's official that I'm going to be here at least until August 2021. But again, probably three to five years. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, we, I mean, that's how, that's my current plan. But you never know where life's going to take you, you know, man. Anyway. So, we ran, so I basically ran over. We had a big emotional meetup at uh, the grocery store. We made a scene at the grocery store, i.e., <laughs> I don't know if I'm using IE correctly. I think, like, in other words. <laughs> I'm really bad at drinking. <laughs> I, like, burp on water and crap. Anyway. So we bought so we bought food and then went back to my place and then set up the four beds and then slept. <laughs> my bed, my, I mean, it was cramped and we had to, like, block off some, like, sinks and stuff. But, uh, my, the place was, is, like, very, what well, did, it did fit four people five people actually including me fairly comfortably you know so that's uh, that's both and i bought a bunch of air mattresses so like if i ever want to have a uh, guest over then I'm, I'm all set up i got i got sheets and blankets and mattresses <laughs> so i can continue to house people preferably i would not house four people at a time but uh you know i can definitely do like one or two comfortably you know and i could do four if i really need to but uh you know whatever so then we went so we bought food went back and slept and then december 21st was uh yeah was like a, the first full day and uh, i drove for the first time in japan because <laughs> i have a uh, international i've been talking about like trying to get a car which will probably be which i'm in the middle of currently still in the middle of that's probably will be the next episode <laughs> special preview for that because there's a lot to go there's a, it's not it's not easy. Like, buying a car is not easy, especially if you're a uh, gaijin. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so basically, but uh, we rented the car, and I drove it, and I have an international driver's license that will... I do have eventually have to get, like, a real Japanese license, but that will work for uh, a year, so until August 2020, this August. But, uh, yeah, it was not easy. Like, I mean, it was kind of easy. Like, I'm a good driver, like, it just in general. But, uh, like, the car was, like... It was, like, in Japan, so everything was on the other side. Like, you had to drive on the left side of the road, and the steering wheel was on the right. And, like, 
another thing was another big thing was like the windshield and turn signals were mixed up so like all of us like everyone who was driving like kept mixing that up like every time we'd go to make a turn like <laughs> it was really funny like we had a we had a count going on and i think i think i actually won i think i was the one who did the least amount of windshield wipers when i meant to do the turn signal i think i only did it like two or three times and my mo my mom did it like a hundred times it was really funny <laughs> Cause like she just could not figure it out, <laughs> but uh, so that was but and also the car was like a, a like a minivan, so it was a lot bigger <laughs> than any car I've ever driven before. Cause I think the biggest car that I've ever driven was like it was like some sort of like Jeep thing, which, which was kind of big. It was like this. That's when I that's how I, that's the car I learned how to drive on. It was a stick shift, but yeah, it was pretty big. <laughs> when I get a car, I will hopefully get one of those like tiny like little K cars. That'll be easy to drive. Won't be very manly, but that, uh, that's not necessarily what I'm concerned about at the moment. <laughs> can you see? Can you see the text? No, you can't see the text. I do need a better camera, but again, cautious with money and lazy. I'm not, I have my microphone in a cup. Are you not aware of that? Speaking of my microphone being a cup, can you hear me? Okay. Sick. Anyway, it'd be really awful if I recorded like an hour and a half of story times and it just went out the window. <laughs> Because then it would just never be recorded. Because I would never want to do that. <laughs> I would redo that. So yeah, so I drove for the first time. That was cool. Uh, this day was kind of like I'm gonna be like raiding these days. So the first day was fine. Like we just met up and then set up. So that was like day zero. Uh, so then uh, I drove for the first time. We went. They, my family wanted to see the new Star Wars be because it's, it's the new Star Wars. <laughs> And they wanted to watch a movie with me or something. I don't know. So we uh, we went to the movie theater, which is in Fukushima City, and then bought tickets and then left. And that was kind of a waste because, like, my mom was just worried. Like, oh, everybody, everybody's going to be lining up to see the new Star Wars. And I'm like, ah, uh, Star Wars is not. Like, it came out, like, a couple, like, I don't know. I think it came out December 21st. I think it came out December 20th. But, like, it's Japan. I don't know. Like, even people in America didn't really care about the new Star Wars. <laughs> So, like, I was not too worried, but uh, my family was worried about it. So we went and then bought tickets and then, like, way ahead of time and then left. So that was kind of a waste of time. But then uh, we went to uh, the UFO Museum <laughs> because there's a, a UFO museum just on the outskirts of Fukushima City. And I heard about this wa a while ago. And I was really interested. And, like, my family, I had to do a lot of convincing because my family was, like, it just looks like it's like it looks like a small place up in the middle of the mountain. So my family was like, it's not going to be worth it. It's not. There's like no information online about it. There, it's like a small place in the middle of the forest. So it's like it looks really shady. But I was like, I was super curious because I was I was kept like seeing like stuff like information about it like online or like around the town, and I was like, I really want to see this UFO museum. <laughs> and uh so yeah so we so we went and i i convinced everybody and basically like you drive up into the mountains like on the outskirts of fukushima city and they basically like you go in you pay like a small amount and they have like a little like it's like a you it's like it's what you would kind of imagine a ufo museum to be like they have like uh, a bunch of like displays on the, about information about museums and they have like little like statues of aliens <laughs> that you could take selfies with i took some pictures and selfies Again, if I remember to put them in, this is good. this is gonna be a lot of editing because I have a lot of pictures I need to put in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have off tomorrow, so I can, can edit that all tomorrow. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, and then they also had like a little like place that you could walk through that like was supposed to like simulate the end of the inside of a UFO, the end of a UFO. Yes, the inside of a UFO. I mean, and uh, that was pretty sick actually. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was cheap. So, uh, I'm, I'm rating it. Like you get what you pay for basically because it, it was like five to 10 bucks relative, like comparably per person. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything like in dollars. Cause most people, most English speaking people are familiar with dollars, but uh, I could, and I don't know how to convert it into pounds or anything else. <laughs> so I'm just going to say relatively how much everything was in dollars. Sorry. On frivolous part of the story. I know. I do think that is the one complaint I've gotten about my storytelling. It's another reason why I started the series because I wanted to improve my storytelling. But a complaint I've got with my storytelling is that I include too many frivolous details and uh, blame the autism on that one. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like I like frivolous details. 
I get hung up on frivolous details. I'm working on it though. Anyway, so yeah, it was, it was really cheap to get in, and you go in, you see the inside of UFO, you see like some exhibits about UFOs, all in Japanese, but we had a Google Translate, which is basically like you can Google Translate camera mode and then point your camera towards text and it would like translate in real time, which I don't, don't use because I'm trying to learn Japanese. Uh, and But uh, I do like, they, my family was using it all the time and I did use it sometimes because it's really funny, the random translations it will give you. <laughs> what was that? that? That was like some like piece of food we didn't know what was and Google Translated, Google Translate gave, said that it was a, uh, severe punishment or something and i'm like whoa <laughs> hold on a second <laughs> but uh yeah and then we also saw like a little they also had a little movie about the place and then we uh like climbed up the mountain to, and saw and like we were able to like see out they had like little statues of aliens all the way up the mountains and at the top you could like see all around it was pretty cool and i got a little uh pin look at him isn't he adorable <laughs> I should take him out of his little pouch so you can see him clearer. And I do need to take all of these out of their little packaging eventually. See, so yeah, look at him. He's one of the little, like, characters of the UFO Museum. His name is, uh, Yutan. He's great. So, uh, if you don't know, I collect, uh, pins and keychains or straps. And I have plans. I'm, I wanted to find a place to display them. I was thinking for the pins, I get a big sheet. To hang on my wall like over there and just put all the pins on the sheet and then just have, have like a wall of pins and that'd be pretty cool and then for the keychains i think uh, i don't know where i'm gonna put like the stuff that i've already shown off uh the floor <laughs> uh, yeah. floor's not too dirty anyway like on the carpet carpet's not too dirty anyway because <laughs> i i want to keep track of what i've shown off and what i haven't anyway so yeah, and then like the keychains, I want to get a stash and then hang all the keychains up. It'll look cool. I'll show you when it's done. Anyway, <laughs> so UFO Museum, pretty good. Was it worth all the time that it took to drove up, drive up into the mountains? I don't know about that one. Anyway, and then we went, went back and watched Star Wars and eh, Star Wars is like, <laughs> it was, it was okay. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't have watched it in any other context, but I don't regret it, I suppose. Then we bought food and went back. And then uh, December 22nd was the Sendai City Day in Miyagi. Sendai is like the biggest city in the Tohoku Prefecture, which, uh, yeah, I, is Fukushima is in. And also Akita is in. So I just like, I have, a, I have a connection with the Tohoku Prefecture. But I've never been to Sendai. So it was cool to go to Sendai. It was a really big town. It, it was like, I think it's like... I don't know, like, even, like, in comparison to Tokyo, it's, like, m tiny, but, like, it's still, like, it's still pretty big, you know? It's still a pretty big city. Densely packed city, you know? Uh, so, first we went to the Sendai Dai Kanin. That's the first, end of the first page, because I spaced these things weirdly. Let's just, uh, put them back like this. So, basically, the Sendai Dai Kanin is, like, this, a uh, big statue of a, of a Buddha. It's, like, a uh, hundred meters tall, or 330 feet, if you're an American. I wrote that down. That's the only reason I know that. <laughs> and it was, it's basically like this giant statue. It's like, yeah, it's a like, hundred meters. It's like 330 feet. So like it towers over the town that it's in. <laughs> it towers over like the city. You can like see it from like almost anywhere in the city. It's like this big statue of a, of a Buddha and you can go inside and then you pay to go inside and you take an elevator to the top and you, you go down, you go down it. And as you go down it, you see like statues of like a bunch of uh different buddha like set, representing all like the desires because in uh the buddhism religion <laughs> the buddhism yes we're gonna keep calling it that the buddhism religion um desires bad and that's once you get rid of all of your earthly desires that's when you uh become uh that's when you ascend <laughs> I'm not an expert on this i've been i've been i have been trying to learn more about uh religion in japan but uh it's uh not, not an easy sub. It's not a straightforward subject to research, <laughs> but that's basically what I what I get out of it. And we also got uh, this thing. This thing is a uh, Goshuin, which is uh, this something I learned. Like my family, like researched this and said they wanted to do it, but so and I'm surprised that I never knew about this in Japan before. But basically, it's a uh, a temple book that you you buy it, you get buy it at a temple, and then you take it 
to different temples and you uh give it to the monk there and then the monk opens it up and like signs the page or like gives you a little thing that basically says like hey you visited this temple congratulations so you can like so if you are planning to like go in japan and want like an authentic like thing because like a lot of japanese people have these things too obviously because it's in japan and you can only really do it in japan uh yeah so it's a good way to like mark all the temples you've been to so this is what they look like so you have the name of the temple i think i'm i'm not uh, kanji is hard but like this is the name of the temple and then uh this is the date so this was december this should have been the first one right so december 21st or whatever december 22nd 10 to year december 22nd yes it does say just december 22nd on it and so basically like yeah and it folds out like this so we got a couple by the end of it isn't that pretty sick and then some of them have little pictures on them like this one <laughs> I, I might not i might remember to show off all of these Actually, I'm not going to remember to show off all these because they're all, like, if you don't know Japanese, then it's kind of hard. But, like, yeah, these, every time I say go, we went to a temple, like, we got all of these. <laughs> and some of them have little pictures. Like, some of them have been, like, signed by an actual monk. But most of the time, like, you just, like, the, if the monk isn't there, you just buy, you just pay and, uh, or, like, you donate to the, you don't pay for it. You donate and then they give it to you. <laughs> kind of. So it's kind of like paying, but, like, you, have, you donate. It's a little, it's, the wording's a little different, but, yeah. But if the monk isn't there, then they give you a pre-signed sheet. And sometimes the pre-signed sheets look pretty cool. Like this one, I think it was the Akihabara Shrine. And I think it was also the Akihabara Shrine. I'm not too sure. <laughs> Again, uh, I could translate. This was, this says Reiwa 2, so two, 2020. And then January. This says, just says January 2020. This doesn't have a specific date on it. Anyway, so this is really cool. So if you want an authentic... Uh, souvenir than Goshuin. I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy it. It's cool to have. <laughs> even if, even if uh, I can't read most of it. <laughs> so then we went to Rion, Ri, Rinoji Temple. Rinoji Temple in Sendai. And uh, they had a little garden. It was winter and it was the off season. So it didn't look great. And But there weren't any people there. So it's pretty good. Basically how it went is the Fukushima area it was like off season and everyone was still like at work. But when we went to Tokyo for New Year's. That was like the week that the entire country had off and it was Tokyo. So, ooh, about that one. We also went to uh, Osaki Hachimangu Shrine. <laughs> Again, uh, I know Japanese, don't worry. I just uh, am bad at pronouncing words I've never heard before. <laughs> I have to, like, every time I learn a new Japanese word, I have to say it, like, a hundred times before I won't sound like a weird foreigner about it. But Osaki, Osaki Haji Mangu Shrine. <laughs> and then we went to the uh, Aoba Castle Museum. And Aoba, the Aoba Castle Museum is basically, like, where uh, Date Masamune, uh, like, his castle was. His castle was Aoba Castle. And it burned down. They have, like, a museum there. <laughs> But basically, Date Masamune, he lived there, and he was like the leader of the Date clan who founded this area, which now, which is both, which covers both Sendai and Fukushima. So he's basically like the George Washington of Sendai and Fukushima. Basically, he like founded it and was like, yeah, I'm I'm the ruler, you know. And he's really cool. He had like he had this big helmet and it has like a crescent moon on it, and he missed a, he was missing an eye. <laughs> so like he was a it's very he's very cool. I like him. <laughs> Not just because I live here, but uh, I don't know, or have a connection to the Tohoku region. Because he was like the only one, he was like the only big leader in the Tohoku region. Like out far, farther up north, like there was no like big leaders, like uh, like places like Akita or um, Aomori. And then Hokkaido is a big thing, but like don't worry about Hokkaido. <laughs> the history of Hokkaido is very uh, sketchy, but don't worry about it. <laughs> So yeah, they had a they had a they had like a little museum showing off information about like who Date Masamune was. It was mostly in Japanese, but I was able to translate some of it. It was fun because I was like I was I was the only one who really knew Japanese, <laughs> so it was fun to like be an interpreter and a translator for everybody to like be like show everyone around, show my family around my town, and be like, oh yes, uh, you know, do th like 
do things. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'll grab that later. <laughs> There's a souvenir that I forgot that I forgot to put on in this pile. Speaking of uh, things that you need to know Japanese for, but it was fun because I got I gave them a more authentic, it's not just the tourist experience because I took them out into like the countryside and uh, where a lot of people don't speak Japanese. So like, you know, it was it was fun. I liked it. Yeah, I'll get into more of what we did later. Or, like, how that specifically helped. So there was one situation where, like, if you don't know Japanese, then you just can't do this, <laughs> you know. But I'll just, we'll, get, we'll get into that later. Don't worry. So it has a museum, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, and, and I also got souvenirs. Most notably, uh, this beanie <laughs> uh, that says Masamune on it, and it has, like, the symbol of his helmet. And that's pretty sick. Hold on. Let me take this off. Hello, eyes. Look at that. That's pretty sick. And what's even sicker is that if you flip this down, it has the eye patch. So you can like cosplay as Ma Masamune. Isn't that pretty sick? Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dumb, but I do like it. I didn't even like, I bought it and I didn't like explore it thoroughly. So I thought it was just this. And then I flipped this down. And I was like, oh my God, it's the eye patch. It's so sick. <laughs> So uh, I, was I was debating wearing this for the rest of the video, but uh, eh, I might. It's a little cold in here, but now that I've actually started to record the video, I'm getting warmer for some reason. I just like the uh, adrenaline is warming me up. But that's a it's a pretty it's a pretty sick hat. I don't know. Uh, I'll definitely look like a dumb foreigner tourist, but wearing this around town. But I might I might do it anyway. <laughs> it just looks cool to like have. You know, I was having, like, uh, my dongo wear it earlier. This thing, by the way, I got at a, uh, was handmade. It's from a dongo character from Clannad. I was handmade at a, ex at a, uh, anime slash video game, uh, convention from, like, gosh, over ten years ago, I think. <laughs> it was crazy. Anyway. And uh, what else did I get? I got a pin. That was, uh, I got two pins actually, cause I got this pin. I was like, oh, this is the best pin I could find. It's kind of cool, I guess. It's the, uh, it's got him, uh, but it's the uh, Date family crest. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then I bought that and the hat and then I checked out and then uh, my uh, friend, the my mom's boyfriend's son, who uh, I know and so I will just refer to him as uh, my buddy. <laughs> he w he informed me of another pin, and I'm like, ah, effing, damn it! And I went back and I bought this, <laughs> and I think it's a much cooler pin. It has like a silhouette of him, and it's red and black, and it's super cool. <laughs> so now I have two pins. <laughs> and it says uh, Date Masamune on it. If you're wondering what that Japanese says, so that's pretty sick. So I have two. I have two Date pins. <laughs> so it's like the founder of my area, so it makes sense. Uh, did I get anything else? I think that's all I got. What is this? Let me open this off screen so I know what it is. What the hell is this? Oh, that was Mount Fuji stuff. Okay. Why is Mount Fuji... I tried to organize this where, like, back here is this stuff and near the beginning of the trip and then back here except for this, which I got at the end of the trip, which I'll show off later. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah, that was pretty sick. <laughs> I, uh, and then after the Alba Castle, we went to Sendai Station for food. I don't, I know I, I entered, da, 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 yeah, okay. There was something I forgot about earlier, but yeah. But yeah, no, it's Star Wars Day and then the Sendai Day. Just trying to get everything right. So we're still on the Sendai Day, the Sunday, which is a Sunday. And then we went to Sendai Station for food because the Sendai famous dish uh, famous food dish is uh, beef tongue, which is just like cow tongue grilled. And so uh, we did some research online and uh, went to a beef tongue place and I had beef tongue and uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's just like regular like beef, but like it's a little more like melty in your mouth kind of, you know, it's a little bit more ch easier to chew, it's a little softer. It's a little bit more tongue like, you know, <laughs> and then, um, uh, the, my, the friend who is a, a vegan and my sister who did not want to eat beef tongue, <laughs> did not want to eat tongues, went to a, uh, vegan restaurant, which I did not go to. So I cannot comment, 
but they said that they enjoyed it. <laughs> so uh, then we went back and slept. That's actually a pretty good day. You know, the first day we had like was didn't do a whole lot. Was kind of like wasted because I think we were all like, or they were all like, my family was all like tired because like they were jet lagged. So and then we also wasted a lot of time by just going all the way to the movie theater just to buy the ticket, and nothing else. So that was okay, but like this was definitely a good day. We did we did a uh, we did this the statue and we did the castle and we did the whole sendai and we had beef tongue it was good <laughs> and then december 23rd was the uh one day i had work because like that was like the end of ceremony like thing because at the beginning and end of every semester in japan in japan school system they have a ceremony so like i could have skipped out but i'm like eh, i'll go to it <laughs> You know, and then, so I went, so I, I went to work, uh, and, uh, well, I also wanted to conserve the days off because, uh, I might, I might need to use them to get my license, <laughs> but, but, uh, anyway, uh, what my family did is, uh, they helped, they, like, they rearranged my whole apartment because they got there and they're like, oh, you, you could be doing all this better. And I'm like, I, I know <laughs> I just haven't had the time. I, I moved in and, uh, like just threw everything where it could fit and just like immediately started getting to work and stuff. <laughs> So I haven't had a lot of time and or a lot of resources. They also had a car. They could go buy things like those th throw things out and like buy things to organize it. So that's what they did. And it was very good. It was like half a Christmas present. <laughs> they called it. And I'm like, OK, I, I'm, it's a good Christmas present, a good, very practical Christmas present. Like, what would you rather want a um, an ugly sweater or like a new better organization system for your house? Like I've definitely like, I've been feeling the organization system better. But yeah, that's basically all we did uh, that day. And they also had a bunch of laundry to do. <laughs> so then December 24th, which was Christmas Eve, and that was, uh, the, the, that was a Tuesday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I took off, and then that, that next week uh, was just a Japanese hol holiday week because of New Year's. Because uh, <laughs> um, New Year's is considered like the big winter holiday, and then Christmas in Japan is just kind of viewed as like Valentine's Day. It's like a couple's holiday. <laughs> Cause I remember my mom was like, Hey, ask them. Like she was like, they were, we were like at a, like a store and she was like, Hey, ask them if they're going to be open on Christmas. And I'm like, of course they're going to be open on Christmas. <laughs> She's like, just ask. I like, I like, listen, Japan, it's just like Valentine's day or like Arbor day or whatever. <laughs> it's of course they're going to be open. And she like, just ask. And I'm like, okay. So I went to the one of the cashiers and I'm like, Hey, are you going to be open on December 25th? And she like looked at me like, yeah. <laughs> Of course we're going to be open on December 25th. Why would we, what, what are you talking about? Why would we close for, why would we close on like a random day? Like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, which is funny, <laughs> which, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that I was forced to ask just because I saw, got to see a, uh, emotionless, uh, hourly cashier, uh, convey emotion. <laughs> Cause she was like, yeah, <laughs> she was like, yeah 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 we're gonna be open why would why would we not like i don't why but yeah no so i had to use my vacation days for uh to get this week off <laughs> let's open up the the peach juice is this expired <laughs> december 20 2020 September 26. It doesn't it doesn't smell like anything. What is it? What is this thing? I don't know if I I don't hate it. It's like cloudy. Do you see? It's like it's like a little cloudy. You can see in there, yeah. I'm not, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It's too like tart, I guess. It just says 100% juice. So maybe it's just like literally like they squeezed a peach and that's what I'm drinking. But uh, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. It's not, it's just too like tart, you know, and too much like like I'm eating a plant, you know. <laughs> anyway, December twenty fourth was a great. Was like might have been the best day actually, because uh, we went to um, 
Tashirojima Island. Tashirojima, actually, Jima just means island. So ta we went to Tashirojima, which is Cat Island. So you know, y'all might y'all might know about Cat Island. It's there's two Cat Islands in Japan. One like to the south and one in the north. And this is the north one, Tashirojima. So basically, it's a it's Cat Island. It's just an island where like it was like an island that has a history of like silk farming, and then they brought in some cats to kill mice, and then basically because uh they nobody like they didn't do anything to control the cat population so the cat population exploded wildly <laughs> and now uh there's more there's like more cats on the island than people <laughs> the island's just full of cats so it's become a very popular like tourist location because it's cat island so that's pretty good so we drove for like uh we drove for like an hour or so to get to the port uh i forget the city name but it's but there's like a, a city that has a ferry that can get you to cat island <laughs> So, and then we took, like, the ferry, and it's, like, an hour-long ferry to get to Cat Island. And the ferry ride is actually cool. That's the reason why my mom wanted to do it, because it's a, a ferry ride, and uh, she's into that for some reason. I don't like it, and I'm gonna keep drinking it, because I'm a big boy that drinks a drink. This is gonna be really long. I should hurry it up. <laughs> Because uh, I see the sun going down, and it's already 41 minutes. Anyway, so we took the ferry to Cat Island, and uh, we were, like, we went during, like, the super off season. Like, again, was, like, it was just a Tuesday for everybody, and it was also the middle of winter. So it wasn't necessarily, like, high tourist season. So, like, we were the only tourists there. Like, everyone else on the ferry was, like, clearly people who lived there and were just, like, going grocery shopping. Because there's, like, no grocery stores on the island. <laughs> So, like, if you wanted to go, like, you have to take this hour-long ferry. And it's probably a pain in the butt to actually live on Cat Island. <laughs> but uh, I hear it gets a lot of good tourist stuff during the summer. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. I would recommend going to, during the summer because it's really cold. And uh, uh, some of the shops when we went were closed. But, like, it was cool being the only tourist on the island. We had the cats to ourselves. <laughs> So yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, so basically, yeah. When we got there, it was it was how it was advertised. It was uh, we got off the ferry and we just were like we're looking around like where are all the cats? And then uh, as we were walking, like we saw we saw like we just called cats just started coming out of the woodwork, you know, like the cats just started started coming up to us and meowing and being all like. What I was surprised by is like, I was knew I knew that the island was gonna be like full of cats, but like I wasn't expecting for them to be like everywhere i was expecting them to be like hiding in the bushes and i wasn't expecting them to be so friendly because <laughs> those cats are not afraid we're not afraid of us at all like the cats every single cat would like come up to us and like meow and like we'd pet them and like they would let us pet them and like pick them up and it was it was great <laughs> you're not allowed to feed the cats i actually have like a little wool sheet somewhere is it under the plate i don't know i don't know where that went <laughs> Where did that go, actually? I don't know. I had a, I, there's a little piece of paper that I saved that has, like... Oh, here he is. There's a little map of the island. <laughs> and uh, information about the cats. Isn't that pretty sick? Basically, uh, the main points are... Uh, don't feed the cats. Uh, take your trash home with you because uh, it's an island, so it's a little hard to get rid of trash. <laughs> Uh, don't go wander into private property and, uh, don't steal any of the cats. <laughs> it's basically the rules. So yeah, you're not allowed to feed them or steal them, but you are allowed to like pet them and pick them up. <laughs> they love that. And, uh, so we got off the island, so we got off the ferry and we saw cats just hanging around at the port. And then, uh, we like walked up, like we had a really beautiful, I mean, it wasn't that cold and we all had coats. So it was a really like beautiful, like walk through like the forest uh, up a hill to like get to a cat shrine which is just like a little baby shrine unfortunately did not get a i don't know why i need this did, unfortunately did not get a gosherine because uh the cat monk wasn't there <laughs> but it was also like just an unmanned shrine <laughs> but it was just like a little shrine in the middle of the forest that, that was uh all like cat related it had a bunch of cat stuff around it like little like knickknacks of like cat stuff like little cat figures around it like a little pictures of cats <laughs> so it was uh it was pretty sick <laughs> and then we got to like a little like house which uh i think it's supposed to be like a restaurant and a tourist place but it was closed for the winter but like as we got there the people uh that were like that ran that place were like outside feeding the cats so there was like 
20 cats just like all swarming around this area <laughs> and then after they finished eating uh we sat down on the ground and like basically like cuddled with the cats for like 20 minutes <laughs> and it was pretty great the cats are really friendly like like we just we just sat down on the ground and like cats like started coming up and like walking across our laps and like the uh, climbing up our like backs and stuff <laughs> they were they were really friendly and then we just kept walking because we went from like the south port to the north port or vice versa we there's like two ports so we walked from one port to the other port to see the cat island and that was pretty good uh yeah so uh my review of cat island is uh yes very good definitely go uh because the cats are very plentiful and they are very uh very friendly and adorable and very very like very they're very friendly you know that you can definitely like pick them up and like play with them you know but uh the only complaint that i have is that uh it smells exactly how you would expect a place called cat island to smell <laughs> basically is my idea is what i'm trying to get across here like yeah it, it's uh, the entire place smells like cat pee <laughs> And we all, like, at the end of the day, we all smelled like cat pee. So we had to, like, wash our, all of our, everything that we were wearing, including the coats and, like, our bags. <laughs> and, uh, I think I, there's still, like, it, it took a while to get all the cat pee out. <laughs> but, like, yeah, wear, like, I would recommend wearing, like, some old clothes or whatever. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> the clothes that you're willing to, like, throw out or, like, are very easy to wash, you know? Like, we had, like, a, like, fancy coats and, like, actual, like, pants and stuff. Like, so, like... Yeah, that was, that was a pain. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as long as you prepare for that, it's not that bad. <laughs> and after, like, the first, like, 20 minutes, you get used to the cat pee smell. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't like it. I don't like it. So, uh... And this actually has something I had to, like, scribble on. <laughs> uh, because I forgot. We went to the Sendai Pageant of Starlight, which is basically, like, a block... Uh, like a like a street in Sendai that's like all lit up. It's like super. It's like really beautiful. Like there's like a, a like a there's like a, a road like a block of road that has like trees on on like lining the side of it, and they put a bunch of like li lights, a bunch of like Christmas lights. This thing is making me burp. A bunch of Christmas lights on the trees, so it was like super beautiful. It was like. You look up and there's like a billion. It's like that's why they call it the pageant of starlight. It's because you look up and it looks like there's like a billion stars like right above you, and it's really beautiful. I'll probably show some pictures, but um, yeah, basically, uh, it's it's not going to ex convey the beauty of it. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, we went back to uh, went back to my place, and then we went out for conveyor belt sushi. And I love conveyor belt sushi. If you know, I've done it. I've done it a couple times before, and it's like one of my favorite things to do in Japan. Is what I did it. Um, I think this is the third time I've did it. I did it once uh, when I went to Japan in 2015 for the first time, and I went there. I went to a conveyor belt sushi place in uh, Kyoto, and then I uh, went again when uh, like my boss like took me to conveyor belt sushi when I first got here, like back in August, and then I just went again with my family to the same place. And yeah, I love conveyor belt sushi. Basically, you sit down, and if you don't know what conveyor belt sushi is, you sit down, and you there's like a conveyor belt like right next to the table that's like just can that just has a bunch of like plates with sushi on it. And if you see something on the conveyor belt that looks good, you just take the plate off of the conveyor belt, and you eat the sushi, and then you save the plate. And then at the end, the waiter comes by and counts all the plates, and that's how they charge. They know how much you ate and how much to charge you. So it's kind of like a, a buffet. It's like kind of yeah, it's kind of like a buffet. But uh yeah, I don't know. It's really cheap. <laughs> like for sushi, like each plate is only like a dollar, you know? <laughs> and you get like two little things of sushi on it. So like yeah, we were like full and we spent like probably like we ended up being full and we probably spent like 10, 15 bucks a person, so like not bad, not bad at all. And you know, they also have like a menu you can order off of if you don't see the sushi that you want. Uh, and you can also like order drinks and like dessert. They have dessert stuff like they had of uh, they had the dongo. <laughs> I like dongo. Uh, th uh, one of the uh, one of the many different foods that I got addicted to because of anime. Because dongo was from Clannad, and then the other major one was uh, melon bread, which was from uh, Shakugan no Shana. <laughs> 
and I'm sure there's others, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a weeb. I can't. I can't help it. You know. I can't help that anime keeps giving me more food. Oh yeah, I think it was Okonomiyaki. There was like I forget the show, but uh, there was there was a show that I think it was Sweetness and Lightning actually that I was like they they had Okonomiyaki and I was like oh that was good I should try that, which was somewhat recent actually. So it still happens. <laughs> So yeah, that was a that was a good time, and I was I was really happy to like my mom and my sister went with me in 2015, but like uh my mom's fling and my mom's fling son, uh they were both like had it for the first time, and also it was like like even for my mom and sister they it was like the first time they had it in like since 2015, so like four and a half years. It was like summer 2015. I think I still have that video up on my channel if you wanna if you wanna go back in time. <laughs> but anyway, uh. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, it was really fun. It's like conveyor belt sushi, like one of my favorite. I like just be able to like I like the I like the environment, you know, like do the conveyor sitting next to the conveyor belt and just being like, ooh, what looks good? Oh, that looks good. Grab it, quick, grab it before it disappears. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just it's just a lot of fun. I really like I like the sushi. They had a lot of weird sushi too. Like they had um hamburger sushi, which is like a um, hamburger bun and like a cheap piece of cheese on it. It was like a cheeseburger sushi. Uh, which was oddly good. <laughs> they had a lot of other like cool stuff, so like yeah, I, I like conveyor belt sushi. <laughs> uh, and then so yeah, that was the that was uh, De December Eve, Christmas Eve, <laughs> and then for actual Christmas, uh, we started the day with just doing like regular Christmas stuff, you know, like making breakfast and giving each other presents. So you know, nothing Japan related there, but it was a good time. <laughs> and then uh, I found out that uh. uh I have neighbors that I know, <laughs> so, uh, like, they're just, like, other, Eng like, they moved in recently, and they're just other English teachers that I know, so I'm like, oh, we should, we should be friends, <laughs> we should be friends, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because they do live, like, right next door, so, uh, yeah, I should try to be friends with them, <laughs> because that's, like, that's, that's an easy friend, you know, <laughs> like, hey, we're both, we're both guy gene, let's, let's do some, let's do some stuff together, <laughs> So I'll tell you. Uh, okay, it's done. It's done. Where's my water? Where's my water? Uh, okay. Hey. Anyway, yeah, they came over because we were making a bunch of noise. <laughs> They're like, we. They like, they knocked on the door. Like, we were. We heard a lot of English here. We just want to know what's up. And I'm like, oh hi, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you. I know you. So then that was the morning and then the afternoon we drove uh we went on a radiation exploration because <laughs> that was something that uh my mom's boyfriend wanted to do a, a really badly because he was like because you know like back in 2011 uh there was a huge natural disaster and big like radiation uh incident that happened in fukushima <laughs> And so basically, like, they wanted to, like, check that out. And I'm like, ah, you can't really, like, check it out. But what we did is uh, we Google Maps uh, to the Daiichi power plant, <laughs> basically, is what we did. The, like, the power plant that blew up, or not really blew up, but, like, almost blew up or, like, let out a lot of bad things. It's really complicated. You can research it yourself if you don't know it about it already. But, yeah, so we just Google Maps the, to the power plant and just started driving. <laughs> and we saw a bunch of, like, on the way, like, as we got closer... Um, it is really close, like, but, I mean, like, I know they're, like, working on cleaning it up, and, uh, so I'm not, I'm not too concerned, but Google Maps said it was, like, three and a half hours away to the power plant, and, uh, like, um, an hour, like, about, like, an hour from my place, uh, we got to, uh, a guy, uh, we got to a sign that said difficult to return to area, and a guy stopping us from going any further, <laughs> So that was fun. My mom did not enjoy that. She was like, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable. I don't want to know that this is where my son lives. <laughs> but it was a cool, it was a cool, it was pretty cool to like see, you know, to like, it like felt more real that I like live in this place that this terrible incident happened. It's, uh, I, I like it. It's, it's very, uh, I like knowledge. I like understanding, like, cause it's easy to just be like, oh yeah, terrible tragedy happened here. Like not even 10 years ago, but like it's 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 nice to like be able to like feel that and like understand like the it more like emotionally you know we also saw uh bags of radioactive dirt <laughs> so that was pretty cool i mean it was cool i mean it, i mean it, i have a lot of like mixed feelings about it because at one part it's like it's like kind of cool that like 
oh yeah this is like this was like world news but like it was world news because it was so bad but like it's still like i don't know it's something that i've i've heard a lot about and i went there and i was like oh wow i i, I feel i feel i don't know i'm not conveying this properly at all but uh i don't know it, it was interesting you know i definitely enjoy i'm not probably not going to do it again unless i can get like a tour like an actual guided tour and learn more about it and but it was good to just like it was interesting to just like drive and like get somewhat close to the to see evidence of what happened you know because it's really easy to live day-to-day -day life forgetting that it even happened because the only really thing that i see around here is that pe a people talk about it sometimes and b i see a lot of like uh it's called geiger counters or like radio level the little machines to gauge the amount of radiation in the area so that's really like other than that but other than that it's easy to forget so that was cool don't know if it was a good idea to do on christmas but you know whatever <laughs> So we went back to the uh, train station and uh, looked for souvenirs. <laughs> and we did get some souvenirs. Uh, we got these two. So basically, like, we, I went to the local train station and uh, was like, hey, do you have any souvenirs about this town? <laughs> and because uh, and, I thought that they did sell souvenirs because I saw them, uh, like, walking by the station. But when I went, we tried to actually buy them. The guy was like, oh, no, those are, those are really only for display. <laughs> There's only for like display of like what kind of things you can buy in Date. And I'm like, okay, well, where can I buy them? <laughs> Cause that they had a pin that I really wanted. And then he's like, uh, I don't know. Let me see. So he like went on phone. He went like, went on the phone. Basically I had to like, there was a, it was a really complicated, but basically I sweet talked this guy into letting me buy a pin from the Fukushima anime. Hold on. I kind of, let me get it out of its display case. Isn't that pretty sick? Although it's also really funny that uh, the thing that came out about, uh, I mean, the, this wasn't like super new information, but like it's funny considering like the huge like thing that uh, Hideki Anno talked about, like the exposing uh, the terrible things that Gainax did and about how Gainax Fukushima was like um, a shell company <laughs> that tried to steal a bunch of money that successfully stole a bunch of money from Anno. <laughs> And that company was responsible for making the uh, anime that to advertise the, the place that I live in. But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's funny in retrospect of uh, that this pin, or it's funny that I have this pin, but uh, I still like it. I still, I still like it because A, I had to like swindle a guy to get it. <laughs> and, or not swindle, just like sweet talk the guy <laughs> into, get, into letting me get it. And uh, also... Yeah, no, no, I, I, did, I do like that. I do like the show, you know, even if the company who made it uh, was shady. Uh, I still like the fact that the place I live in has an anime, and I have a little pin about it. So that's cool, you know. It's a very, it's a very, it's definitely not a souvenir that most people have, because I had to talk to a guy about it. That was another, that was the part, that was one of the parts where, like, if you didn't have someone that spoke Japanese, you wouldn't be able to sweet talk the guy into getting a pin. <laughs> Unless you were a very, a very smooth talker. But I like it. It's cool. And I already broke the little display case it came in. But I, I'm going to take it out and uh, put it on the sheet anyway. And he, so I bought that for like fifth, for like 10 bucks. And then he also gave us all uh, bookmarks. <laughs> or no, they're rulers. Yeah, they're rulers. <laughs> that uh, have another Date anime character on it. <laughs> or like the Date clan guy. <laughs> Mas Date Masamune. <laughs> Who's also who is also who this guy is supposed to be, by the way. If you uh he has like an eye patch. I don't know. Can you see his eye patch? It's like underneath his hair. You get the idea. If you've seen the anime, you know about him. Again, uh Date Masamune Nikuru, I think it's called. Nikuru. So uh yeah, if you wanna it's like on YouTube, but it's on the sub, but you can find subs later anyway so yeah so uh i bought a pin and uh we had a uh, kfc christmas kitchen chicken because <laughs> basically that's a, like a big thing in japan is like uh instead of doing turkey they for christmas like even though it's just a wednesday it's like not a super special holiday people still like line up to get kfc christmas uh chicken and the reason for that is complicated i think it started because some foreigners were like hey we want uh turkey for christmas but we can't find turkey, so let's just get some KFC. And some K and KFC saw that and just started advertising K KFC Christmas chicken. <laughs> so uh, it's a bit. It's turned into a big Japanese thing. <laughs> so 
So I got some, and it was, uh, yeah, it was just KFC. <laughs> it was just KFC. It was like, it's just like regular American KFC. It was pretty good. Though I haven't had an actual American KFC in a while, so I don't know. I can't directly compare, but it was the Japanese KFC Christmas chicken. Pretty good. And then they also, I also got this plate. Which is actually kind of a cool plate. Doesn't like It doesn't like say KFC anywhere on it, other than like the back. It just says, uh, happy, says, happy Christmas 2019. The only KFC thing is the snowman holding a KFC bucket. <laughs> so that's pretty sick. I'm actually not going to put this on the floor because it's a clean plate. So we'll just put that right there on the table that I have the laptop sitting on. I'm still recording audio, right? Ha! Okay. This is going to turn turn out to be really long. <laughs> so let's uh let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're going to keep doing it. We also I also got a handwritten message from the colonel himself. <laughs> if you read that, it's uh, it's in Japanese obviously because the colonel is a uh, bilingual, I guess. <laughs> But basically it says, uh, thank you for coming to visit our shop in Japan. I hope you have a good Christmas is basically what it says. <laughs> so there you go. I got, I, I'm doing some translation work. You happy about that one? <laughs> it's vaguely what it says. I'm not too sure exactly what the last kanji says, but I think it just says, "Have please have a good Christmas, I think. <laughs> That's what that kanji says is, please have a good Christmas. That entire kanji says that thing. <laughs> So anyway, gosh dang, this is going to be a kind of a long part, a long uh, episode, I suppose, because I'm not even like halfway through. I'm on like, like the third page, the third page out of like, oh no, no, I'm somewhat halfway done. We, I'm just thinking that uh, I'm an hour in and I haven't gotten to Tokyo, but Tokyo was kind of short. <laughs> we spent most of the time in the Fukushima area. So then we had a drinking party. We had drink, we had several drinking parties. <laughs> Because uh, alcohol is really cheap in Japan. That's the what, what, two of the best things about living in Japan is cheap alcohol and cheap toilet paper. <laughs> that is that's definitely the biggest benefit. Because you can get like like twenty like twenty twenty five percent alcohol like to do shots with, and you can get like this much like a huge giant like thing of alcohol for like ten bucks, and it's insane. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, so we had a lot of drinking parties. There's a reason why those drinking parties are very common in Japan because they're very cheap to do. <laughs> Although alcohol is very dangerous, but as long as you're careful, it's fine. And uh, we were obviously very careful. <laughs> so then, December twenty sixth, we went to uh, Fukushima Aizu Wakamatsu, which is like out in northeast southwest fukushima i still don't know my coordinates i get uh west and east mixed up <laughs> but in west fukushima <laughs> which is like this way to be but i think it would be like this way for you but basically uh yeah it was a old samurai place and uh that that, that was oh that day was okay so christmas was pretty good i'm not reviewing the days but definitely the best day so far is uh Christmas Eve, Cat Island, and Conveyor Belt Sushi. <laughs> the radiation place was fine. It wasn't super jam-packed, but still was fun. And so we went to uh, Aizu Wakamatsu. We, I have this listed twice because I'm crazy. <laughs> I don't know why I keep showing you. You can't see it. I don't want you to see because I'm reading it. This is the, this is the you can't. I, you just here, here. Do my job for me. Read this. I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm relaxed. It's fine. Da -da 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 -da. My uh, my autism is showing a little too much. So anyway, we so uh, first we drove we drove up to a closed bridge. We like drove up into the mountains and saw a like, closed bridge. My nose is also like a little like plungy. I th I blame this thing. I blame this thing for all my problems. <laughs> for ruining my throat. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So we drove up to a closed bridge and because nobody knew that the bridge was closed. <laughs> so then we had to turn around and then, but on the way back, we saw uh, monkeys crossing the road. We saw little like snow monkeys crossing the road and we like slammed on the brakes because A, we didn't want to hit them and B, we wanted to take pictures. <laughs> so that was pretty sick. We took some pictures of snow monkeys. <laughs> and then we saw uh, Aizu Wakabatsu Castle and uh, which is basically uh, this thing. <laughs> It's a like an old castle in uh, Fukushima, Aizu, and uh, yeah. So the basically like that was it was okay. I liked it. Uh, we you had to pay to get in, and uh, yeah, it was like 
five bucks it says right here like a 520 yen which is about like four or five bucks and uh like so basically like the outside of it is like it's like a reconstruction so like the outside of it like looks like this but like the inside is like a museum it's not like i would have preferred if it was like a little like more like authentic like yes this is what the the castle looked like like I, but it, i don't know the museum was okay it was a little too touristy for me but uh i enjoyed the museum and that's also where i got this this is like one of my favorite souvenirs i showed this off on twitter earlier but like it's sick it's like a kirby fukushima uh keychain and you the kirby like depending on how you move the kirby the kirby like looks at you <laughs> Cause it's like 3d <laughs> but yeah it's kirby fukushima it says fukushima and it has some waddle d's like playing with the uh akebeko uh or like like a red cow basically it's which is like the like red cow is like the mascot of uh fukushima i say mascot but it's like it's a it's a, a very iconic thing that's on a lot of fukushima stuff it's like basically a red cow that gives you good luck it's like it's based on a story about a red cow who like did some famous thing. There's a lot of conflicting stories about what the red cow did, but basically, the toys, ba like little like wooden toys based on the red cow, are really popular because like they give you good luck and prevent diseases and whatnot. And so it's synonymous with Fukushima. So it's really cool to be like Kirby's cross Fukushima crossover like pin. It's pretty cool. Definitely one of my favorite keychains I have so far. Uh, da, 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 just looking to see if there's anything else. That's why I have like so. If I forget anything, I can just show it off later. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, so yeah, I did like the castle, but it was a little too touristy. But uh, it's still cool to see the castle. And then we went to uh, Saze Sazedo Sazedo Temple. Basically, it's a uh, like a, a sh like shrine slash temple or whatever. I'm not still not hundred percent sure what the difference between shrine and temple. I've asked Japanese people and they don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> some some Japanese people don't know. But uh, I just need to talk to more. You know how it goes, man. Anyway, uh, yeah. So basically, it's like a big like shrine and uh, or like a temple. I guess I guess you would consider it a temple because you don't really go inside of shrines. But basically, it's like this big structure. I have a bookmark from it. Yeah, it's this big structure and it, with a spiraling staircase in the middle, and it's kind of cool looking. <laughs> it was kind of it's kind of cool to see, and it's kind of cool to go up because you just like spiral up, and it's, it's really dangerous because it doesn't really have like proper stairs. It was like more floor slanted floorboards that went all the way up, so it was really easy to like. And it was raining, and all our f uh, shoes were slippery, so like we almost died. But it was cool. It was cool to go up there, and we got a ghost shooting from it that I showed off earlier. I showed off like pretty much all my Goshuin, but we'll do it again. But they do they do look pretty similar to each other. So there you go. <laughs> uh, which one was handmade? I think, yeah, this one isn't glued. This one is hand drawn, so that's pretty sick. <laughs> Not just a piece of paper that was a pre-drawn sheet that was glued on. But yeah, we there was a couple where we ha actually had the monk sign it. So that was pretty sick. Da -da -da. So then we ate soba. Soba was pretty good. <laughs> also, soba is vegan friendly, which is why we did that. <laughs> but also, just soba is good in general. And I also got some coupons. Uh, I forgot forgot where those go, where those went. So then on December twenty seventh, uh, my family wanted to meet my boss. <laughs> so we went to city hall and they met my boss, <laughs> and that was pretty much. Also on um, the Monday that I had to go to school, they also like. I got permission from the principal to have my family like look around the school because like none of the students, all the students like went home already. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, okay, they can tour the school. <laughs> so yeah, they did that. And then they also met my boss on the 27th. So uh, that was cool. <laughs> I had to do a lot of translation work. Uh, but, uh, you know, my boss, my boss has decent English, but uh, uh, there still had to be some translation work. You know how it goes, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I don't know why I wrote that down. It's not an interesting story. They met my boss. They like my boss. <laughs> so then we went to uh, Fukushima City because my mom wanted a uh, Daruma doll. And basically a Daruma doll is like a little like round red doll thing with, that, with missing eyes. And so basically like you dot one eye for when you have a wish and then you keep it in your house to help you like have your wish come true. And then when you when your wish comes true, you dot the other eye. So basically the goal is to have a bunch of double eyed... Uh, doing my dolls in your house to represent all the things that you've accomplished you know 
like when you want to do when you have a wish that you want to come true or when you want to have like a goal that you want to accomplish you can use a Druma doll so yeah and my mom got one back in 2015 and she liked it <laughs> so uh she got another one i don't think i got anything what is this okay what i opened this up. oh wait this i said this was the mount fuji stuff this okay i got it we're good we're good we're good we're good we're good we're good when did I... Okay, no, no, no. I just want to make sure I wrote everything down. When did we do karaoke? Did I write... Yeah, no, I wrote, I wrote karaoke down. Okay. So anyway, we went to Fukushima, got to Ruma doll, and then we also had McDonald's because my family just wanted McDonald's. To be honest, McDonald's in Japan, a lot better than McDonald's in America. I did... I, like, right before I left, I had some McDonald's in America, and then right as I got here, I had some McDonald's in Japan. And Japan McDonald's is actually good, you know? It's, like, on on the level of, like, Wendy's in America, you know? Like, the, the, it, has act, it tastes like actual food and not just frozen crap, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I like it. Even though McDonald's in America is not too bad. But, you know, um, McDonald's in Japan actually tastes like food, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, there are also a bunch of picky eaters. That was, that was actually kind of the problem is that... Uh, we had some picky eaters, but uh, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that later, like, when I'm reflecting on the trip of what could go better. But, like, it wasn't that big. The trip overall went really well. There was just a couple of problems I think we could we could improve next time. Anyway, uh, so then we went to the onsen. I think that was, like, most of the day. Because when we went to onsen, it was, like, the night time. But, yeah, we went to an onsen, and uh, it was, like, recommended because, like, we were talking... I was, I've been talking to people, like, before the trip, like, around uh, my place, like, people at, like, my, the work and, my work and stuff. Like, how I was saying, like, hey, what, what, what area around Fukushima would you recommend going? And everyone said onsen, 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 onsen. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we'll go to onsen. So we went to an onsen. It was, like, um... It was actually, like, right next to the closed bridge. <laughs> like, that was unintentional. <laughs> But, like, yeah, it was, like, right next to the closed bridge. It was, like, up in the mountains. And it was actually kind of cool because, like, I've done... I did onsen, like, a couple of times uh, back in the uh, Akita days. But, uh... Yeah, it was, like... But it was the first time that I did an outside onsen in winter. Because it was, like, it was like freezing cold and it was, like, up in the mountains. So it was, like, there was already, like, snow on the ground up in the mountains. Because it still is yet to, like, really snow here. But, like, up in the mountains, there was, like, snow everywhere. And it was, like, super cold. And it was, like, a super hot onsen. So I was, like, oh, that's pretty sick. And it felt really good. And basically, we all we all had, like, uh, we all went into one onsen together. But we didn't get naked. We all had, like, bathing suits. Because <laughs> we all wanted to, like, be together. And it would be really awkward if we were all naked. <laughs> so, yeah. That, so, yeah, we did, uh, we did, we, we, we went out and did bathing suits just to be together and not be super awkward. <laughs> But, uh, I have done Naked Onsen before, uh, when I, back in the Akita days, and, uh, Naked Onsen is, is good stuff. <laughs> Highly recommend. But, you know, but Bathing Suit Onsen is okay. It still felt really good. Like, basically the same thing, just not as, uh, freeing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, uh, I definitely know that I really enjoyed the Onsen, because when I got out, I passed out. <laughs> That was the first time I I like never pass out. That was the first time I've ever like I was I was the last one I was expecting to pass out. But it was just like get being in the super hot warm onsen and then immediately getting out and then like I had to like stand there for like a couple minutes while I, everyone else was like trying to figure out how to because they they like my family was doing things and like trying to figure things out and I was just kind of standing there in the cold right after getting out of the onsen and I just remember like I just remember standing there and I was like. I was felt feeling a little dizzy, but I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm not. I'm. am not gonna like fall down or anything, because I was worried about falling down because I was getting really dizzy. So I just like grabbed onto like a, a door, and I was like, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I just need to sit, sit, like sit here for a second until I stop being dizzy. And then the next thing I knew, I was on the floor, <laughs> and I was like, what's it? And everyone was like, oh my god, I thought you were being. I thought you were joking. I thought you were joking. I thought I didn't know you were being serious. Are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> 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 that was really cool I, I mean i mean obviously it was a little scary to pass out but like uh i mean it's not that uncommon for when you're doing an onsen you know especially with such extreme temperatures <laughs> so like yeah it was it was it was fun to pass out i've never passed out before <laughs> and we'll probably not pass out again because i'm not because i am healthy and i don't usually pass out 
but just for like on and i was surprised that i was the one to pass out because i've done like that kind of onsen before but i've done an onsen before but i just haven't had just extreme temperatures before there's always been inside onsens <laughs> so yeah and uh <laughs> apparently i fell directly on my butt and uh because i i didn't know because like my butt didn't feel i mean my butt hurt a little bit but it didn't feel like that bad <laughs> it sounded because everyone was like oh yeah you feel directly on your butt and i was like yeah i assume so because i was standing at the door and then all of a sudden i was sitting on the ground <laughs> and i i'm by the way disappointed there was like everybody was like around me and within arm's reach so like nobody caught me <laughs> nobody had the reaction to catch me at all really okay i don't know about that one <laughs> my mom felt really bad afterwards because she didn't catch me and she let that happen and she was like i thought you were just joking and i'm like nah <laughs> i joke but not like that apparently anyway so we went back to adopt for chicken stand there's like a little like chicken stand there's like a little like stand in the middle of my town that just sells uh fried chicken and it's really good and i took them and they also admitted that it was really good it's like my favorite place to go even though i've only been twice but i should go more i've just been super busy i need to like clear up my schedule and just like explore and be free once i get a car it'll be a lot easier because a uh, bike is starting to really make my legs hurt <laughs> but uh, having a car and having a uh, we got uh, two weeks off of work uh, made this trip a lot easier <laughs> on my legs anyway so that was December 27th where I passed out <laughs> and then December 28th we went to Fox Village I'm sure you've uh, if you follow Japan uh, vlogging stuff then I'm sure you've heard of Fox Village it's like it's a, it's like in Miyagi so like near Sendai it's like Zhao Fox Village and it's a uh, it's a pretty good place it's just like you pay um i think it's like 10 bucks a person to get in and they just like they, they you just get get loot let loose into a fox sanctuary that just have foxes everywhere and uh it was pretty cool like the foxes were very cute and it's very cool like it was the first time i've like seen foxes up close but uh it was a little my one complaint with the area is that while the foxes were very cute it was a a little too wild like i think the foxes are like a little too like crammed in you know so like there was a lot of like infighting like we saw some fox fights that got pretty like uh they got pretty that got pretty severe there was some pretty severe fox fights while we were there but uh you know uh they were all like they were all generally okay you know like they didn't like hurt each other that much but yeah, I do definitely feel like it's a little cramped but it's still cool you know it's still a cool place you know a little fox sanctuary i still Anytime, like, people, like, argue against zoos, I always, like, throw the defense of, like, well, even if the zoo isn't giving them the most optimal conditions, it's still better than, it's, they still have a higher survivability rate than just being in the wild, you know? <laughs> like, a zoo, even a bad zoo is still a nicer environment than the, outs, the outside nature, you know how terrible nature is? Have you seen the Discovery Channel? <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 but obviously I do uh, say that zoos need to get their crap together. <laughs> but yeah, so I definitely think that like the foxes are too like sp it's crumb crammed in. But uh, I don't know. I think it, it's still a cool place. I still recommend it. You know, as long as you're as long as you uh, as long as you have a strong stomach <laughs> and uh, some guts of steel, then because like there's signs everywhere that's like don't don't get too close to the foxes. Don't like put your head near the foxes. Don't like have anything that look might look like a snake near the foxes or they'll bite your arm off you know <laughs> so you definitely had to be careful but like i don't know it's kind of cool it's kind of cool to like be like in the fox village like the foxes ran the village not the humans you know <laughs> it was uh it's kind of sick and i got a souvenir a little picture wrapping that has a picture of a fox everything that you buy in japan is like wrapped like this yeah, it's a little fox keychain. Uh, it looks like an anime fox, according to uh, some people, but uh, according to my family. But I think it looks pretty sick. It's I needed to get something, some fox-related thing from the fox village, and uh, this is the only really keychain I could find. And it's oops, and it's double-sided. Right, and it looks very like foxes in Japan are associated with like mythology, they're like divine creatures. So like. 
it's very fitting that like it looks very like spiritual and the only other fox keychain they had was from the fox the fox anime they were like doing a promotion with like the new fox i forget what it's called like senko san or whatever i forget what that show is called i'm really bad at knowing names but i've, I've heard of that show before because <laughs> I'm, I'm an anime nerd <laughs> that's my job but basically it's, it is dark, starting to get dark outside anyway uh yeah so uh i was like ah, no, I've, i haven't seen i haven't really seen that show so i'm like ah, if i watch it and i hate it then i won't like the keychain and also just i want a keychain from fox village not like from an anime you know so that's why i got that ha, da, 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 da. i think this was from the conveyor belt sushi i got a little this little sleepy otter out of a uh, capsule machine it's very cute it's very cute uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, also Fox Village ticket. I don't know why I have three of these things. Look at that. They did not have any baby foxes. We did not go during mating season, or we got went during mating season. Maybe that's why they were fighting so much. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a ticket for the UFO museum. Pretty sick. Yeah, four bucks a person, like less than four dollars a person. That would be like three fifty something. So yeah, not expensive at all. Uh, oh yeah, Mount Fuji size that already. Anyway, so yeah, Fox Village is very cute. And then, oh yeah, I have to, we went to uh, Craft Village and base, that was the part, that was another part where like, we basically like, we went to this little place and uh, we went to like a place called Craft Village and we went to one of the stores to paint Kokeshi dolls. And I'll show you what a Kokeshi doll is right now by showing you my own that I forgot. This is a Kokeshi doll. <laughs> Look at him. He's adorable. I he cracks me up every time. But basically, this is the general shape of them. And, uh, like, they're little wooden heads and with a body like that. And, uh, yeah, they're basically, like, to help sick children or something. I, I'm not 100% sure on the mythology of them. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my Kokeshi doll. He has a funny face that cracks me up every time. And, uh, yeah. And he also has a little fire flower on him. I think it's cool and I have my signature on the back of it and the date 12 28 so that's pretty sick <laughs> I'm also gonna put him like somewhat nearby so he doesn't fall but yeah so that was that that was one part where like we definitely like to learn how to like paint it because like this is somewhat like a Kokeshi doll like the the hair is very traditional Kokeshi and the back is Kokeshi and like flower design and the colors and stuff so we had like this old, like this old lady teach us, and she only knew Japanese, so like I had to translate. So I would definitely, because I think it had a bad review, like on some website, on some tourist website, because you, if you don't know Japanese, then you basically can't do it, or you'll have a really hard time, or basically stuff like that. I need to stop saying basically. There's some background noise, but I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, I'm producing a lot of background noise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, that was fun. And a good flex of my Japanese. And then we went to karaoke. So uh, basically, uh, yeah, we came back and then went to Fukushima City to do karaoke. And I finally got to sing the Psychopath song. You know the one. Cause I feel that one. You know that one. <laughs> and I got to sing uh, the Ava song. <laughs> the Psychopath one was purely for pleasure. But the Ava one I just kind of wanted to do. Because if you don't know, the Evangelion opening is like the most popular song at at karaoke in japan <laughs> and like it's true like i went to that place and they were like oh most popular songs and ava was like number one <laughs> like like constantly <laughs> like by far so i don't know it's it's a very good song to uh for karaoke like it starts out slow and then has like a really fast fun part and then like has a break in the middle so it works out well for karaoke and then uh also when i went there i got a uh keychain of the uh, mascot of the train line f in Fukushima City which is her <laughs> she's adorable I don't know exactly what her name is I think it's like Rento Musume which means just like railroad girl <laughs> so uh she's cool I don't know that's a weird name for her but uh yeah just a uh, yeah railway daughter <laughs> railway daughter that Musume can either mean like daughter or a young unmarried girl which is i think what they were going for 
So yeah, there you go. It's a train waifu. <laughs> I like it. Mostly because every time I take the train, I see po posters with her on there. So I wanted a souvenir. Uh, da -da -da. Oh yeah, and also the karaoke place was also at a uh, arcade, and I wasted a uh, a lot of money trying to get that a cur Kirby tumbler because it was a really sick Kirby tumbler. Because it, it was like a tumbler and it had like a stained glass with all the characters on it, including Kirby, uh, Meta Knight, DDD, and like the one side was Bandana Waddle Deek, my son. <laughs> so like I was like, I really want it and I spent way too much money trying to get it. And then my family finally pried me off the machine and was like, look, it's on eBay for like 10 bucks. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> when it's not the same, but I, I, I think I will buy it off of eBay. <laughs> Because I want it. I want it badly. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, so then on December 29th was a uh, laundry and packing day. Because the next day we we're going to go to Mount Fuji. So we just did a bunch of laundry and packing. Utilizing that I have a washer. <laughs> or that we have washed. Or that there is a washer nearby. There's like We went to the laundromat. Uh, we went to a melon bread place. Which is one of my... One of my... The best melon bread place. It was like Melon Day Melon. It's a uh, off off my recommendation. I love, as I said before, I'm obsessed with melon bread because of Shakugan no Shana. <laughs> I'm I'm still because the main character Shana was like obsessed with melon bread, and uh, that made me obsessed with melon bread because I tried it and I loved it. So I found and I, I found the best melon bread place, Melon Day Melon. <laughs> I'm I please sponsor me, Melon Day Melon. I will I I will shill you forever because you have really great melon bread. So we went there. And they all agreed, yeah, great melon bread. And then we also went to an okonomiyaki place in Fukushima City. It was the, I guess if, if you're paying attention to the canon of this, it was the same okonomiyaki place I went to with with Dr. L. <laughs> I forgot if it was Mr. or Dr. But yeah, it was with Dr. L. And uh, yeah, it was good. They had, they had, you can bake it. We made it ourselves this time because we didn't, we didn't w whisk out like I did last time. We made it ourselves. And so like, yeah, it's... Which um hold on let me let me catch up because my mind is moving faster than my mouth. I hit myself in the face. So yeah, it was really good because um, they offered vegan options for the vegan and uh, non-vegan options for everybody else. That we we like we got like a thing big thing that included bacon, chicken, like all kinds of beef and stuff, like a bunch of non-vegan stuff. <laughs> But they, but we still had uh, vegan stuff for the vegan, and basically like they give you like this big bowl and they give you a grill and you just cook it yourself. And my mom was complaining that like oh well you know it's a pretty pretty sweet business you know you just give them the ingredients and they the customers make it themselves. But I'm like, yeah, but we get to do the fun part of cooking. You know like they already have all the ingredients chopped up and like measured out and that they take care of the cleanup. So like you just do get to do the fun part of cooking, which is like putting things on a grill and flipping it and eating it, you know? <laughs> so I would say it's worth it, you know, just because they do all the non-fun parts of cooking. You get to do the fun parts of cooking. <laughs> That's a thing in Japan too. Like a lot of places like you cook it yourself because it is fun to cook, you know, if you can skip all the non-fun parts. Like yakiniku is like basically the same thing, but with meat. So yeah, Okinomiyaki place, very good. <laughs> this, is, this is not the first time that I've gone. It is not the last time I will go. <laughs> And then on December 30th, we drove to Mount Fuji and uh, we went to the famous Mount Fuji view with the pagoda. Like driving to Mount Fuji took like half the day because like Fukushima to Mount Fuji took like five hours or so. And so that was kind of a pain in the butt. It's officially five, <laughs> but uh, I knew this was going to be running late anyway. You can probably tell because it got dark. <laughs> I'd no longer have any natural lighting. <laughs> I hope that it isn't too loud, but it's probably not too loud. It's fine. So anyway, uh, yeah, we went to the famous pagoda view. I mean, if you've seen picture any picture of Mount Fuji, it's the picture of Mount Fuji with the pagoda that we went to that shot. But it was like really cloudy. We couldn't see Mount Fuji at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we just kind of stood around waiting for the clouds to clear, and they never did. <laughs> uh, we checked into the B and B, and then we went to the station food court. It was like the a station and a food court. That is common in Japan with station and foods. Uh, da, da, da. I mean, I'm getting distracted by the background noise, but it's fine. So I had curry for dinner, and I got a uh, pen. I can't find it. I lost it. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. 
I got a pin. I, I got a. They had a Pokemon slash uh, Mount Fuji uh, capsule machine, and I'm like, oh, this is a good Mount Fuji souvenir because I'm a I'm a nerd that likes Pokemon. So I got this Pikachu pin. It's pretty sick. It's Pikachu in front of Mount Fuji, and it says Mount Fuji. <laughs> so I like that. That's pretty good. I'm gonna put that back so it doesn't get scratched or destroyed or whatever. Uh, da -da -da -da. I should. I am trying to hurry. This, the, the, this, uh, the rest of this will go a little faster. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> because uh, we went so because uh, Tokyo went ve very fast, <laughs> and we found quickly found out at Tokyo we could not do a lot of things because everywhere was like super crowded or super um, closed, <laughs> because it was uh, during that week. It was during um, holiday week. <laughs> we also did a photo booth. <laughs> Because I was like, hey, that's a traditional, like, Japanese culture thing that you have to do. Like, everybody is obsessed with photo booths, so you got to do a photo booth. I don't know if it's a traditional Japanese culture thing, but it is, it, is a cult, it is a stereotypical thing that people do nowadays, you know. Da -da -da. So we woke up at the Mount Fuji Bean B, and I made that Twitter meme video. <laughs> uh, which I might show if I remember. So we're just packing up to leave from our B and B, no biggie. And you know, you look outside, and it, it's Mount Fuji. Oh my God! Uh, and the clouds were gone, uh, so we got a really good view of Mount Fuji. You could like see it from the window in the B and B, so that was pretty cool. And then we went to a shrine. I forget the name of the shrine. I think it's key. Like I wrote it down what I thought it was. But it was just a shrine near Mount Fuji, and there's like 20 shrines near Mount Fuji. But I think it was the uh, Kitaguchi Hongu, Kitachi, Kitachi, Kita, Kitaguchi, Kitaguchi, Kitaguchi Hongu Fuji Sengen, I think. <laughs> I can't read. It was it was this one. It was this one. I can't show it. But Kitaguchi Hongu Fuji Sengen. I think that was the name of the temple. It was a cool temple. <laughs> and then uh, we went to uh, the t Mount Fuji pirate ship. Basically, there's like a, a lake near Mount Fuji, and they run like a big like pirate ship near it. And that was pretty sick. Like, because we could you could see Mount Fuji from the lake. You could see like a little bit of Mount Fuji from the lake, and it was like a pirate ship, so it was cool. And I like I like pirates. Pirates are cool. <laughs> and I got a, a pin out of it. This pin. This like has the picture of uh, Mount the uh, pirate ship and Mount Fuji, and there's like a little like gate, so it's pretty sick, right? Yeah, Hakono, Hako, Hakone, Hakone. I also can't read any, uh, Japanese when it's like written out in English like this. I don't know why. I just have a mental block about it. But if it's in uh, Japanese, then I can usually read it as long as it's not it's not in kanji. If it's in hiragana or katakana, I can read it. Anyway, so yeah, I think that's the... Oh yeah, I also got this. <laughs> Look at this. I got uh, Evangelion uh, cookies. <laughs> and also, it was it says uh, Studio Color. So I'm not giving money to Gynax. I'm giving money to act the actual creators of Evangelion Studio Color. So that's pretty sick. So uh, should I try to open this? <laughs> it's a little late, but uh, we'll, we'll open this. We'll see. We'll see what's going on. Edit point. Edit point. Wait, I'll clean up that later. But yeah, it is. It's just like a like a cylinder box with Ava. See, I ruined part of it. But yeah, so basically, you open it up, and there's cookies. Look, you you open it up, and there's little you can grab cookies out of it. How do I do it? Oh, I see. Okay. Wait, no, I don't see. Wait, no, I don't see. Okay, you have to... The cookies are in there, but they're, like, in a little pouch. So I have to get them out. I have to get them out by opening up the top. So let's do that. Oh my god, can I just get some scissors? <laughs> no, apparently not. The scissors are not thin enough. I'm working on it, don't worry. Maybe from this side. I can't get it open. I can't, I can't do it. 
Oh, I'm getting it. I'm ruining the, the tape, but I'm getting it. I ruined part of it, but it's fine. You just need the front. <laughs> Okay, cool. We got the cookies. We're getting the cookies out. Okay, guys. So you just open these. And you take out the little, like, do not eat packet. Yeah, the little do not eat packet. And you pour them back in. And they're falling out. They're falling out. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, we're good. We're good. We got, we're good. We got this. Edit points. I'll probably, I'll hopefully cut that out, but if you saw that, then, uh, don't worry about it. So anyway, I will op open this up. I got con collected some trash, but it's fine, and I kind of ruined this a little bit, but whatever. You just, mo we mostly just need the front. So you open this up, and his mouth opens up, and then you can get cookies out of his mouth. And they're, like, they're little printed. They have, like, little, like, Ava stuff on them. They got that guy... You got this guy. They're like, oh, they're like the angels. So I like, I guess he ate the angels. Like, nom, 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 nom. I love it. It's really good. It has nothing to do with Mount Fuji, but just a really cool, it's a really cool thing in general. There's a uh, Lilith. I forget. I'm really bad with the names and Ava. <laughs> I'm really bad at name with names in general. This is really fitting because like the first episode, I, uh, I think that's all. Actually, there's one that I'm missing. There's one that I haven't shown according to the side of the box. I can't find it. Did I not get that one? It's the little, like, diamond guy. The little diamond angel. I don't think he's in here. I'm just, like, pulling out all the cookies. Oh, here it is. We found one. This guy. He's cool. So, yeah. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Let's shove him back. Om nom 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 nom. And we're gonna try one, obviously. They just look like little, like, cookies. <laughs> Like, they don't look, like, super special. They just, like, look like little sugar cookies. But we'll do it, you know? He opens up. You reach inside. There's, like, 12, 14 cookies, I think, in there. You open it up. Ugh. You open it up just like that. Just super easy. Look, there he is. The little... I don't know what this is. This guy's supposed to be. Maybe it has something to do with New Ava. Because <laughs> I think most of the Studio Color Ava stuff has to do about New Ava. Good cookie. Have you ever seen, you know those like Pillsbury Doughboy kind of cookies that have like that like little cookie packs where like they have like little prints on them? That's basically, it's basically the same thing. They're like just little like sugar cookies. It's good. I like it. I'm good. Wait, hold on. Okay. I'm good. So yeah, very good cookies. <laughs> Nothing super uh, out of the ordinary, but uh, good cookies nonetheless. <laughs> Was it worth the editing that I have to do now? Uh, we'll see. Uh, da -da -da -da. So we drove to Tokyo, we checked into the new B&B, &B, and then we went to Tokyo Tower for New Year's. Tokyo Tower for New Year's was super great. And it's not, it's a very American kind of thing to do, to like go to a place and like party, because in Japan you usually just like stay at stay at home and spend time with family. But uh, in America, we go out and we go partying in Times Square. <laughs> so it was kind of that kind of feeling, but it was still like very like, it was still somewhat Japanese-y. It wasn't like super like people screaming loud and drunk in the streets. It was like, it was just like a crowd of people like waiting for New Year's. But there was drinking involved. <laughs> cause I, I bought like, cause they were like, oh yeah, alcohol for like five, for like five bucks each. And I'm like, okay, let's buy one for everybody. Like, if it's less than five bucks, because I was, like, thinking, like, okay, well, surely, like, at a festival like this, that's only going to get me, like, a little tiny cup of alcohol, right? But, uh, no, like, I paid for it, and the lady's like, okay, here you go. And she gave, gave me, like, big thing of beer, and I'm like, oh, okay, sick. <laughs> so that was fun. And uh, public drinking uh, is legal in Japan, in case you wasn't weren't aware. <laughs> People do it in America, too, but, uh, you know. It's not necessarily legal, but in Japan, like, you can just be drunk on the streets, and, uh, most people in Japan are, uh, don't have an issue with that. <laughs> so that's cool, because most people in Japan are, like, 
what aren't going to be super obnoxious drunks <laughs> you know they're like generally like it's more like polite but uh you know you still get you still get issues like that sometimes so then january 1st we went to uh asakusa <laughs> I, I still not too sure if it's pronounced Asus, Asakusa or Asakusa because I've heard it both ways. But uh, Demon Slayer pronounced it uh, Asakusa, and I heard it on the train pronounce like on the train announcement saying, "Oh, now approaching at uh, Asakusa Station." <laughs> so we're gonna say Asakusa anyway. That that has a famous temple, and it was absolutely crowded. Like the second we got off the train, it was like people shoulder to shoulder, like just lined up like from like the entire town was like packed because like a tradition in japan is like on january 1st you do the first shrine visit of the year <laughs> and that is like the most popular shrine and the most crowded city in the planet so like yeah obviously like it was like we didn't actually like do the shrine visit because to actually do the shrine visit visit we had to stand in line for like two like the the, the line to get in to Asakusa, the Asakusa temple was like several blocks long. It was like insane. <laughs> but we went to the festival and waited through crowds. And unfortunately, we did not see uh, Michael Jackson there, unfortunately. But we did try out all the Japanese festival food. The people who get that joke will get it, don't worry. <laughs> so anyway, then we went to, uh, we had some festival food. I like festival food. I was a I'm glad I was able to show my family festival Japanese festival food because... Festive food, food in Japan is basically like all the same, <laughs> so it was good. Got some meat sticks and whatnot. I'm gonna close this window because it is officially dark. And I don't want people looking at me. So I already have people looking at me. <laughs> anyway, so then we went uh, sky tree shopping. So basically, like we went to Sky Tree, Tokyo Sky Tree, which is like a radio tower that's taller than Tokyo Tower. And uh, we didn't go up it because it was again giant line and uh, it was expensive. But there, but at the base of Sky Tree, there's like a huge mall, and it had uh, the Pokemon store and the Jump store. <laughs> so at the uh, Jump store, I kind of showed this off on Twitter already, but I bought a bunch of. I just had, at Pokemon store first. Pokemon store, I didn't really buy a whole lot because I already have a bunch of Pokemon stuff, and I wanted to save my money for anime stuff. But I did buy this because uh, it was like a random artwork, and I needed artwork for my wall. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a random, so I didn't know what I would get. So I got Salamance. Don't super like Salamance, but I might just put it on the wall like that just to have stuff on my wall because I don't like having blank white walls. So uh, I think I will put it on the wall, but it will. Uh, it is, it's highly likely to be replaced. It's just uh, so I don't have blank white walls. <laughs> and then, but more importantly, it also like everything we bought there came with this, which is basically like a little like book to advertise the Pokemon anime. So, like, it has, like, little, like, character bios of everybody. And it has, like, a manga that's basically, like, the first episode <laughs> in manga. Like, an abridged version of the first episode in manga form. <laughs> so, that's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not so, just advertising Sword and Shield in general. So, that's pretty sick. <laughs> So then at the jump store, I bought a bunch of, I found the bleach section, the tiny, that was like a, it was a relatively big store, but it had like a shelf for bleach. <laughs> and I basically bought them out. So I bought these coasters, which are too thin to use as coasters, but again, stick them on the wall. They would look, they, they could look very nice on the wall. So I got uh, a random set of coasters. They were just, again, random. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to get. So I got a picture of the 13 captains, so that's pretty sick. Uh, Ichigo and Grimjow fighting, that's pretty sick. Uh, Byakuya, uh, what fight was that? Was that the fight against the, uh, that one Roncar? I forget, it's been forever since I've fully watched Bleach. I've seen clips of Bleach several, like, several times throughout the year. I've seen episodes here and there, but it's been a while since I've like fully experienced the entire series. Then we got Chad. Look at him. He's cool. And then we got someone uh, from uh, the last arc. So, yeah. All relatively cool. All cool. All cool. The highlight, I think, is definitely this. This is pretty. This is my favorite one. <laughs> so, yeah. I could just, like, put those on the wall. They're, again, they're too thin to be used as coasters unless I don't have anything, like, wet. 
like done nothing that is like cold and wet and it has condensation so like anything hot i could use as a coaster but yeah so that's pretty sick and then i also got a little plushy abyakia so that's pretty sick let's take him out of his thing so i like plushies that's another thing i'm kind of like half collecting in addition to my keychains <laughs> is uh oh this guy needs to be fully opened okay cool so yeah look at that isn't that pretty sick? He has like all that. He has that. I did not mean to get so much Byakuya stuff. Because I got that and I'll show up. I got more. I got that and I got the little, the coasters that you saw. And I got uh, this. And uh, I got something else later that I'll show off. Because there was another place that had bleach stuff. But yeah, he's cool. He's also a keychain. So like he could, he could go in my plushie collection or my keychain collection. So that's pretty cool. And of course he's got the, he's got the six on his back and the scarf sick i like bleach don't worry about me and also i had i got a like a random pin uh from the bleach store and uh that was um i mine was a uh, byakia and then we went back like another day that i'll talk about later and my sister wanted like a byakia pin because <laughs> byakia is like her favorite character um because i'd spreaded my i spread my bleach addiction to her <laughs> That does that's don't take that out of context by the way that I gave a bleach addiction to my sister. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so she went there and uh, she got uh, Eisen, and she wasn't she's not a huge fan of Eisen, so I'm like I'll trade you. I like Eisen, and she's like yay. So now uh, so in the Twitter picture I had a uh, Byakuya, but now I got Eisen. Cause I already have plenty of Byakuya. I have a plushie, I have the coaster, and I have something I'll show off later. So uh, yeah, Eisen pretty sick he's a cool villain uh and then yeah i also got something else the second time i went to the jump store because <laughs> again everything was closed so we just like visited some places several times now are we done on january 1st okay and then january 7th 2nd january 2nd when we were in tokyo um i have walked around park i don't remember i wrote that down at the time but i don't i have zero memory of the park oh no 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 no! i just remembered it we were walking around the imperial palace i think uh, but the imperial palace was closed so we just kind of walked around it in circles <laughs> i think that's what it was anyway and then we went to akihabara one of my favorite places in japan like i don't i'm not a huge fan of tokyo like tokyo is very like crowded and kind of stressful and kind of like uh, very cramped and some people like that but I grew up in the desert I like wide open spaces so Tokyo is not super huge my jam but Akihabara I love Akihabara I'm, a, I'm, I'm, an, anime, I'm an anime nerd you know my daughter knows I'm an anime nerd <laughs> and I have a bunch of anime stuff everywhere but uh so yeah obviously yeah, you can see some of my anime stuff in the background <laughs> and obviously all the stuff that I've gotten up till now is anime stuff so like yeah if anyone if anyone knows me even a little they know i'm a huge anime nerd <laughs> and i've always been a huge anime nerd ever since ever since I, I watched pokemon for the first time back when i was a bab so yeah akihabara is like one of my favorite places in the entire world i love akihabara it's just like a cluster of just like the otaku level you know it's not just anime it's like video games and stuff like that it's just like it's like my people you know it's like a it's like a town for made for by and for my people you know it's a very good place you know again like people have criticized akihabara for like just being kind of like a tourist trap and like having really expensive stuff but like you don't go to akihabara to get cheap to get the best anime stuff because if you really want the best anime stuff there's other anime stores in japan that would have it have it cheaper and you can also get it online but like as like a tourist place to go to it is it is a real it's a good place you know to just like be able to wander around the shops and be like, oh, what's this? What's that? Oh, that's pretty cool, you know? <laughs> so, uh, there, I don't, what did I buy? I, there was two Akihabara trips, but I don't remember what they, what, where, oh, no, 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 here we go. So I got this, this, and I think, I don't know. I definitely got, um, during my first Akihabara trip, I got this, I entered a lottery for uh the sli uh, slime show and uh i got the lowest prize which is the prize that i wanted actually which is the keychain that like the other prizes were like the big plushie of rimuru <laughs> 
and uh, some like alarm clock or whatever. But I just wanted the keychain, so like I'm glad I got the keychain. So that's pretty sick. It's really cool. I like the like the the texture of it. It's like a little like little rubbery. It's pretty cool. He's like has a towel and there's a smaller version of him on his head. <laughs> it's pretty sick. Also, I know he's supposed to be genderless, but like he says several times in the show that I that he's a guy. So <laughs> when I made my uh, slime video, nobody gave me crap for that. But uh, I've seen other people give people crap. I've people have give, given me crap for that in other ways. But like he says in the show, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> he's cool. And also, I got this wall skull that I can't open, <laughs> but apparently it's of Miku. We're gonna try to open this, okay? It might take forever, but we're gonna try to open this because it, because it, because this is what it's supposed to be—like a little like shot of Miku. <laughs> and I like Miku, obviously, because you know Miku and uh, Toho, like Vocaloid and Toho, was like basically the otaku internet back in two thousand eight to like two thousand eleven. So like, even though I haven't really like. Even though I'm not, like, the biggest, like, fan of, like, Toho and Vocaloid, like, with the games and stuff that have come out, like, I've seen so, I've, like, consumed so much, like, fan-made Vocaloid and Toho content that I can say that, yeah, you know, I'm a huge fan of Vocaloid and Toho. <laughs> and I've also played a lot of the Toho games, so I'm just a regular Toho fan, too, in addition to liking Toho in fan-created context. But we're gonna try to open this. <laughs> but basically it was, like, a, uh... God damn! It was a store like in the middle, like of no, because you know Akihabara is like just a bunch of like little tiny stores like crammed together. So like one of the stores, one of the little hidden stores that I found was um, just had a bunch of like really old like used wall scrolls, and they had a lot of cool like series on them. It was fun to like look around. It was like oh they had tail they had a tales of the abyss wall scroll. Like I haven't heard that that name in like years, dude. <laughs> So it was really cool. Okay, let's see what this let's see what this poster actually is. Let's see if it is what it describes itself as. Sick. <laughs> it is what it is. It looked a bit weird in uh the squall, the little squally thing, but yeah. That's that's the Miku wall squall. So that'll probably go somewhere. Like somewhere on the wall. I think like if you saw in the last episode there was like white space next to the Walls, the Gurren Lagann and Index uh, wall school, so it'll probably go like to fill in the white space there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I do like it. Like, you can see it from the other side too. <laughs> so yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good piece of artwork. I like it. Miku is a cutie. So very happy with that purchase. <clears throat> so I think that's all I got on the first trip. Also, also the Pokemon. Thing came with this I don't know what this is I think it's a piece of gum <laughs> I would chew it but I don't want to be chewing gum for the rest of the video this has already gone on long enough <laughs> I can't I can't delay it more <laughs> so yeah we also saw the uh, Kenda shrine which is the big Akihabara shrine <laughs> so that that's where the special like Goshuin came from with the picture of the shrine and we also saw the Ghibli clock the Ghibli clock is like this big clock in Tokyo that basically like is based around like castle in the sky or like I think it's based around specifically around castle in the sky but I think it also has just like general like Ghibli stuff and it's like this big clock and like three times a day it goes off and like like it has like little like animatronics like go out and start like banging like gongs and stuff it's really cool I recommend like looking up videos of it but it was really cool to like see it in person you know it was very um it's very Disney World like because it was like oh it was a cartoon it was a movie that uh, they used animatronics to like kind of bring it to life you know and it was it was very cool <laughs> the whole thing like moved around and like it was it was insane <laughs> it was fun to like watch it was it went on for like five minutes and it was it was it was fun I highly recommend if you're in the Tokyo area to check that out <laughs> and then uh, we're almost done yeah we only have uh, a page and uh, some change left. <laughs> And uh, I have a lot. I still have a lot of souvenirs to show off, though. I have no idea. Anyway, so January third, we uh, explored Shibuya, which is another cool place. I saw the new design of the 109 building. Very sad. Very sad that the 109 building got changed from its iconic look that was in The World Ends with You, but because it's now it's like a little bit more like the text is a little bit more like rounded and it's a little bit more it's like purple now. 
So it still looks okay, but uh, it's not as like iconic as like the old 109 building. And uh, we saw the outside. The reason we went there is to go to the Nintendo store that just opened up like like the last couple of months, like I think like two months ago. So uh, we went to the Nintendo store and it had a sign outside that said, wait time to get into the store, two hours, three hours, I think, actually. <laughs> I don't know. It was like something ridiculous. Like we went there and we're like, nope, we're not doing this. Turn around immediately. <laughs> so I'll go back because it just opened and it was like the busiest week in the entirety of Japan other than like Golden Week. So like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go back to Tokyo and the Nintendo store during its off season. <laughs> Because I'm not, it's not worth it, you know? We have an, one of those in my home country. It's really weird how that's like the first and only, like the first Nintendo store in Japan. Because like, there's like a couple in America. So I don't know, I don't know what, 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 what's what been going on. But yeah, it's obvious. Obviously, we should have seen this coming. It's going to be packed. <laughs> so we just saw the outside of it. So that was cool. And then we went to Wendy's. My, my, my girl Wendy's. I love Wendy's. Wendy's is, uh, Wendy's is good, and I was curious what it was like in Japan. I think I've had Wendy's before, but in Japan, so whatever. And, we went, and then we went to Harajuku because my mom's uh, fling wanted uh, a present for his daughter who didn't come. So we went to Harajuku and went to the fashion store, 6% Doki Doki, which is like a huge, famous apparently. <laughs> uh, it was cool. It had like a weird aesthetic. There was like a weird, creepy mouse out of the wall because it's the year of the mouse, I guess. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. I liked it. And then we went to the uh, Meiji Jinju Shrine. This was January third, but there was still like, so the line was like, it was only like an hour in line to get to the shrine. But we were like, let's do it. Like, this is like one of the most famous shrines. It was the Meiji Shrine in Harajuku. So like, let's let's just stand here for an hour and, and do it. I think it was a little over an hour, but we did it. And then we did the first shrine visit of the year. So woo, <laughs> even though it was like on January third. But yeah, that was the first shrine visit of the year, so that was that was cool. We we experienced in the tradition of standing in line in front of a crowded shrine to do the shrine thing. <laughs> and on the way out, we didn't get any Goshuin because like the line for it was another hour and a half. But uh, we got some other souvenirs. Like I got this souvenir, which is a really cool uh, omamori. Omamori is basically like charms. Like they have like secret like powers or like they help ward off bad guys and they do various things so basically it's like a traditional like um souvenir or like yeah like a souvenir like not the souvenir that you give to somebody but like a souvenir that like you keep for yourself and you have as a memory so like yeah it's very cool a it's very cool looking because most of them are just red and gold but this one's like black and gold and red and green and it looks super sick and uh, this Omamori specifically is for victory. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I want victory. I want victory in things that I want to do in life. And I want victory because uh, I want to go start. I want to start going back to Smash tournaments. Because <laughs> I, I've not been to any Smash tournaments since I've been here. Mostly because I've not had a car. So, uh, and I'm working on a car right now. <laughs> it's not an easy process, but I'm working on a car right now. And I'm start going back to Smash tournaments. Because I like Smash tournaments. And I like hanging out with uh my people my uh fellow uh smash obsessed brethren <laughs> so yeah and i like the charm it's cool you know uh doo -doo 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 -doo. then we went to a samurai museum i don't think i got anything out of the samurai museum samurai museum was okay you basically were like you basically like you went in and they had like a little like history of samurai and they you got to like dress up as like samurai except the samurai outfit that i dressed up in like looked like a mumu <laughs> So I don't know. I might show off pictures of that if I have any of just me. Uh, da -da -da -da. And then we went to an udon place, which uh, was basically, yeah, it was cheap udon. I just I had like three bowls of udon because it was like, because basically the whole like the whole time I was like a little like more hungry than I would like because like we had a lot of issues with food because I'm trying to like get rid of this trash. We had a lot of issues with food because we had a lot of picky eaters in our group, <laughs> so it was really hard to get food. But we finally found a place that everybody liked. So I just grabbed as much food as I could. <laughs> and then we went to an ice cream place. We went to a Cold Stone Creamery, I think it was. A, it was the Cold Stone Creamery in Tokyo. It's really surreal because, like, all these American brands like uh, Wendy's and uh, Cold Stone Creamery, like, don't exist in Japan outside of Tokyo. I think I also saw – we didn't go to any of them, but we also saw some Taco Bells in Tokyo, and that's – 
that's really weird because like i never see any mexican food in japan like at all or at least the closest equivalent to mexican food which is taco bell because taco bell isn't mexican food as we all know i'm really okay we're just gonna leave that alone we're just i'll fi i'll clean it up later but yeah, so uh, it's really weird. Like Tokyo is a crazy place. I do like Tokyo, but I would never want to like spend any more longer than like a week in Tokyo. But Tokyo is kind of a, a crazy place. <laughs> so then January fourth, which is uh, the last like real day, uh, we checked out of the B and B, and then we found a place to stash our bags, which was really hard because like again, it was super popular. So all like usually like by this train stations there's like storage lockers where you pay like five bucks and you can like store your bag in it all day but uh like all those are full <laughs> so we had to like find a different place we had to like find like a shipping place to like hold our bags because it was like every all of it was full <laughs> but it worked out eventually <laughs> and uh we we oh yeah that was the second trip to the sky tree so that's when uh i could that's when my sister got that and we traded badges and i also got a I got a non-bleach related thing this time. I got a little Todoroki in a bottle from My Hero Academia. From here, from uh, Hero Academia. I'm trying to call. I'm trying to start a thing where I just call it Hero Academia because people get really confused with Boku no Hero Academia or My Hero Academia. So I'm just like, let's just call it Hero Academia. So I got Todoroki from Hero Academia. <laughs> he's adorable. So either he's either a plushie or you can put him in this can, and the can is a keychain. <laughs> And I don't know why he's in a can. <laughs> it has a little, like, can opening thing on it, too. So, I, like, I got nothing. I don't know why. It's cool, though. It's really hard to, like, shove him back into the can. But, yeah, it's pretty sick. And, uh, da -da -da. Oh, yeah, this was the first time I went to, uh, this was from the first Akihabara trip that I forgot about. But, uh, I got a, uh, Ghost in the Shell pin. It was like there was like a big like uh, production IG store, like there was like a, there was like a floor in a bigger store dedicated to production IG, and they had a big like Tachikoma that I took a picture with, and uh, so you can you can see that if I remember to put it on screen right now, and they also uh, the, the thing I bought was a Tachikoma pen because I needed I need a new pen and I like having fun pens, so I wanted something to like I want to uh, I want otaku things to use at work, so yeah, I have a pen. With a bunch of quotes. When am I? The little Tachikomas on it. They're adorable. They say a lot of weird things on it. Like, yeah, this just says Tachikoma. Goodbye. Standalone complex. Uh, what am I? <laughs> it's uh funny. Goodbye. I think I I think I'm just repeating myself. But yeah, it's also a multicolored pen because they got uh red on one side and black on the other side. So that's pretty sick, right? has a nine on it it's been a while since i've seen standalone complex and i think i also only watched the first season i need to watch the second season of that but uh, i do like the tachikomas and standalone complex i do like the original movie better but uh standalone, com standalone complex is really good too oh yeah also at the uh in between the udon place and the ice cream place the previous day um i went to uh we just like kind of shop we're shopping around at the stores because the ice cream place was like in a mall and i bought like an otter thing that i lost whoops <laughs> i broke something oh yeah i bought this a little sleepy otter sleepy otter is adorable <laughs> a little keychain or you can just like sit on your hand <laughs> or sit on a table or whatever so that's cool and i also bought this i don't know what this is from I just I had no idea what this was from. I just like really liked the aesthetic of like these lesbians and like one smoking a cigarette and it's it's like I like the art art style like old like eighties anime art style. I just I had no idea what it was. I just saw it and I'm like I love this I love this aesthetic, so I need to buy it. And I tried to look it up and I have no idea. <laughs> like the I looked it up and I think it's like some random artist from Twitter. So yeah, I think it's a sticker actually from the looks of it but uh so i'll find a place for that but yeah and i'll link the artist twitter in the description so you can continue going down this rabbit hole <laughs> but i think that's it i think that's that's the rabbit hole but there's like i don't know he just makes a lot of weird art they make a lot of weird art but this is like more mild because a lot, a lot of the stuff they make a lot of gay art both lesbians and guys uh so like 
and a lot of it is like gory <laughs> so like if you want to go down that rabbit hole then there you go but uh yeah i definitely i like this picture i like the sticker very good it's very it's a very good i like the uh the journey of me like well what is this i love the aesthetic i have no idea what it is so i bought it and researched it and then uh yeah you just went down a rabbit hole <laughs> to try to find that guy <laughs> Cause like this is all I had, and like so I, I tried to like translate like the tried to read the kanji, but the kanji is not in a normal font, so it was like really hard. But yeah, I'll link the guy's Twitter account <laughs> in the description. So anyway, uh, Sky Tree went back to Sky Tree, and then we went to Carl's Jr. in Akihabara, and then we went to a uh, Hedgehog, Owl, and Rabbit Cafe in Akihabara, cause they were like you can't you can't. Lee, you can't have a vacation in Japan that doesn't involve an animal cafe, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it was... So, they had owls you could pet, and they had hedgehogs you can hold and play around with, and had, uh, rabbits. They had rabbit burritos that I tried to eat. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember showing some pictures. I'll probably spend all day tomorrow editing this video. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah editing this two and a two over two hour video almost done don't worry about it guys hang in there <laughs> so then we did more akihabara shopping woo so i got a a full metal alchemist uh keychain strap it's not really a strap it's like a strap that people put it in their phones but i'm just gonna hang it up and display it hawkeye from full metal alchemist because i just finished watching brotherhood not too long ago and i got this that's already broken <laughs> But like I got a crappy ass like bleach figure that's fall that falls apart constantly of Byakia. <laughs> More Byakia stuff. Again, out of a random thing. I think my sister also went tried it and got Rukia. And it also has this other part that I can't get working. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really cheapy ass figure. <laughs> and I only got it because it was uh it was bleach. But yeah, there's there's supposed to be more, like this is supposed to like cover it, right? You get the idea. I can try to put it back on because I, I had it working just fine. I had it all put together. I, I think it just falls apart. I tried to use glue to tape it on, but it doesn't work. And his arm fell off, but you get the, you get the idea. You get the idea. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix it later and then not, I'll put a, I'll put it in a place where I'm never going to touch it and so it won't fall apart. <laughs> but I'll fix it. I'll put it back later. <laughs> but yeah, I've had figures like that in the past. It's it's a pain in the butt. What is this? Oh, yeah. Just showing you what the other otters are. The otter that I got just says, uh, I'm awake. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's the name of that. <laughs> also, so, so next, uh, so one of the places I went to was a video, a classic video game store. And, uh, in Akihabara, because it's not just, like, about anime. It's all about, like, otaku stuff, hardcore otaku stuff. So, there I got a, uh, a plushie of Tom Nook. Let me open that up. Very sick. I like it. I like it. From Dobutsu, Dobutsu no Mori. The Animal Crossing. <laughs> or Animal Forest, translated directly. So, that's pretty cool. He's also a keychain. So I could display them with my keychains or my plushies. And something, this is one of my favorite things that I got in the trip. I got a Japanese copy of Banjo-Kazooie. Look at that. That's sick. It's a, it's a real game. It's a, it's, it's like I got it from a classic game store. It was like, like 15 bucks, like less than 15 bucks, <laughs> like 1500 yen, which is about 15 bucks. It's sick. Look at this. Look at the logo. And so I'm like, I'll probably find some place to display it. I could like glue it onto the wall or something. Find some way to glue it onto the wall or like display it on a shelf. And somebody pointed out that uh, having a Japanese copy of Banjo it does not is not as cool if you're in Japan. And I'm like, f, you're right. So I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna display it next to my American copy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have somebody mail me my American copy and then I'll display them next to each other and they'll look super cool. I love it. Look at this box art. Look at this art. It's not box art. It's just like, look at this art. Isn't that sick? <laughs> and also, I could just easily edit my Nintendo 64. So, because the Nintendo 64 is region locked, but only physically where like the games are different. So if you just remove the little plastic 
part in an American N64 to prevent putting in Japanese games. You can just put in a Jap Japanese game and have it work. Like for I bought Japanese Animal Crossing at a con one time, and I just took off the back, and I was able to put it in the console, and it worked just fine. <laughs> but here I don't want to take off the back because it's cool. But uh, so I'll just hard modify the Nintendo 64. But it's sick. Banjo and Banjo to Kazooie Daibouken. Banjo and Kazooie's Grand Adventure. So that's pretty sick. Uh, da -da -da, more slime stuff, more slime show stuff. And I, this, I got this out of a uh, random machine, Shinon. So that's pretty sick. I got this out of, uh, yeah, out of a random vending machine. And I got uh, this. Actually, she, I, could, I did not get her. This is a zombie girl. I haven't seen that show, but I will. And I just like the aesthetic of the zombie girl. <laughs> I'm I'm into Monster Girl. Whether whether or not I like the show, uh, I'm into I'm into Monster Girls and Zombie Girl is part of it. So yeah, she's also dressed up as a werewolf. <laughs> she's like the punker like '90s girl, I think. I will I watch I watch uh, Zombie Girl show eventually. Zombie Land Saga. Don't worry. But uh, whether or not I like the show, I like the aesthetic of Zombie Girl because I'm into Monster Girls. Anyway, yeah. So I got her and I think I got her in Shinjuku, not Akihabara. But I forgot. This I got in Akihabara was uh, uh, No Game No Life Ghibli. Gib Gibbery? Gibbery? I forget her name. <laughs> but there she is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the... what. I'm not too sure what this says. It's been a while since I watched No Game No Life. But yeah, I got her at randomly. And she was like... She's like one of my favorite characters in that show. So hell yeah. I got lucky out of that one. <laughs> Although there's not really any bad characters in No Game No Life. So uh, it was a good... It was a good gamble. I also got Snow Miku, because again, I just like Miku in general, and I got this out of a capsule machine. Capsule machines are generally like three to four bucks, like three, to four, three, four, five dollars. So like that's how generally how much I spend on each one of them, and you get like a random thing. And then, oh yeah, I forgot a bleach thing. I got this. This is sick. Look how sick this is. This is like a file, but I, you can also just hang it up on the wall. It's like the, one of the most Kino c scenes from the series where Ichigo stops a giant firebird. I love it. It's a folder and it like opens up. So like that's three layers. So the first layer is just this. So you can get it without the text. And then the, the second layer is like the white background. So you can like do your, put your own color in there. And or you can put use that as a file. Or you could put it on the wall as some sick ass art. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. I love it a lot. I love Bleach. I love that scene. It's so good. Put a bleak. I think that was like pretty much all they had. It was I think I got like one of everything they had at the Bleach thing. I think the only thing I didn't get was like a bag. There was like a little like bag. Like a little like tiny like coin purse that had a Udio on it. And I'm like, eh, I don't need it. I don't, it was like 20 bucks, and I'm like, I don't need that one. I'll, I'll get everything but that. <laughs> I think there was also like a shirt or something that probably wouldn't fit me. Anyway, so back to Akihabara. <laughs> so I also got uh, him, Kimet, uh, best boy from Kimetsu no Yaiba. He's cool. He's cool. He also looks like he's held to the wall, like he's supposed to be held to the wall with uh, a Band-Aid. <laughs> I don't know, but he's a pin. Or he's like a, he's a chain. He's a keychain, so I'll, I'll put him on the... My sash full of keychains idea that I have. I'm going to put it like right above the door. It'll be sick. And then I got a plushie of Sakura from Cardcaptor Sakura. Unfortunately, it's from uh, the new series that sucks. <laughs> but uh, we can just pre we can just ignore it. We can just ignore it. <laughs> just pretend that it's the Sakura from the good series. Please open. I can't get this. I don't want to, like, ruin her. <laughs> but I cannot get this open. Ah! Okay, she fell onto the floor. There you go. <laughs> She's adorable. There you go. You can. You have a friend now, daughter. <laughs> you have a friend. I don't know what it, what it is about Japan with these, like, uh, plushies that are, like, supposed to be, like, lying down like this. Because my daughter's the same way. 
And I adopted my daughter last time I went to Akihabara back in uh, 20... March of 20... The year I was in Akita. <laughs> I went down and went that March. I went down. So I think it's like 2018. So yeah, it was, uh, it was like two years ago. But uh, now my daughter has a friend. <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say my daughter's like the same way. She's like lying down. So I don't know what it is. But now my daughter has a friend. Looks pretty sick. I like the softness of the hair. <laughs> That's don't don't take that out of context. It's a little creepy. I think my daughter yeah, my daughter also has soft hair too. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, so I got that and then I also got this out of a capsule machine, which is like a Waddle D and it's like a cable holder, so you put it on a cable and he's like sleeping and he's like sliding on the cable. So that's pretty sick. And then last souvenir, I it's nothing super major, but it's a uh, this. It's a little artwork of a uh, slime show that I can also need to put on my wall. Because I just I have a lot of white space on my wall that I don't like. It makes me feel like I'm living in a insane asylum. <laughs> so I just want to I just want to fill stuff. I want to fill the wall with stuff. And but I don't want to just fill it with any random stuff. So that's why I got some good. I got the good stuff, man. Like these these are gonna look great on the wall. I love it. Like, this is really good artwork, and I love this artwork. It's got Milliam, which is one of my favorite characters, with slime. And she's just, like, chilling out. It's very Japanese, very summery. And I like summer. Summer is, like, my favorite season because I grew up in the desert. <laughs> so, like, it's, it makes me feel at home. I hate winter. Mostly just because I hate winter. I hate snow. I hate cold. But, uh, you know, I like summer. So there you go. <laughs> it's a good artwork. That'll look good on my wall. So then uh, Akihabara shopping, I showed in Akihabara, I showed my family the noise of the pachink of a pachinko parlor. Because if you don't know pachinko parlor, like it's loud. It's just basically the game is like a bunch of metal balls like drop down a little like slot and you get like a random thing. <laughs> so basically like imagine a bunch of metal balls falling into a plastic thing times a billion. So like we walked in i just was like hey you want to see something cool and they're like yeah sure what and i'm like i walk into this building and they're like what's this building and we go in and it's just like <laughs> it was great <laughs> and like we walked out and like our ears were ringing and i'm like there you go i i'm glad i showed you that i always i like showing people that just being like hey look at look at this hear this and they're like thanks i hate it <laughs> and i was giggling it's a good time i like it <laughs> And then, uh, oh yeah, I do have one more uh, souvenir, which has been l lingering in the background uh, that I think I got. I don't remember. Where, it was like right before we left. So like r around this time, it was a Tokyo Banana Rocco, which is an otter. So basically, if you don't know what Tokyo Banana is, Tokyo Banana is a, it's a stereotypical uh, omiyage su slash souvenir that people get in Japan. So like you go... If, uh, that for Tokyo it's a stereotypical Tokyo souvenir so if you know someone that's gonna go to Tokyo and they're gonna bring you back a present they're probably gonna bring you back some Tokyo banana and I've never had Tokyo banana before and they had a special otter coffee milk flavored Tokyo banana so we're gonna try it we're gonna try it I don't want to ruin the packaging but I am just gonna throw this away so let's run the back of it Woo, Tokyo banana. Look at that. That's adorable. So yeah. So I've I've heard about Tokyo banana before, but I've never had it myself. So that's what it looks like. Very very nice. Japan is very obsessed with their nice presentation of all their packaging. Got some more advertisements for Tokyo banana. Tokyo banana, coffee milk flavor. Rocco. I don't know what Rocco means, but they're clearly otters. So that's what they are. There's two, four, six, eight of them. In one pack and I think this cost me like 10 bucks so like not bad for like a, a souvenir so uh, let's try one they look like Twinkies so that's what I'm expecting we'll see if they taste like Twinkies or not they got little otters on them I love them I love otters in case you aren't in case you aren't aware <laughs> oh it comes in like a little like dish it comes a little plastic dish this is going to be really messy, but I can clean up afterwards. It's really soft. I, I appreciate the softness. So let's have it. it. Tastes like it smells like coffee. Mm. 
is good. It's really good. I'd say it's even better than a Twinkie. It's like fluffier and softer than a Twinkie. It is like a Twinkie, but it is like, it's a lot fluffy and softer than a Twinkie. And it's full with uh, coffee flavored. It's good. By the way, my jaw clicks. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. Yeah, you hear that? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my jaw. But it just does that. I think I need to, I don't know. I should see somebody about that. Because it's done that for a while. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. Tokyo Banana. Good. I can definitely, like, see, like, I can see, I can understand why that's a popular souvenir, you know? People go to Tokyo and be like, hey, I got a Tokyo Banana from Tokyo. And they're, like, sick. I love Tokyo Banana. Yeah, Tokyo Banana is good. Fluffy. It's like a, like a, I forgot. I just had it in my head. I was just saying it earlier. But it's like a Twinkie, but fluffier and, uh. The cream inside of it is more. Like, there's more. The ratio of fluff to cream is higher than in a Twinkie. No, no, no. It's just been a while since I've had a Twinkie, but yeah. So then, uh, at the end of January 4th, we checked into the place near the airport, which is the Robot Dinosaur Hotel, if you know anything about that. It's the uh, Henna Hotel. So, bit which is basically, like, it's a robot operated. It's a, it's a robot operated by hotels. It's a hotel operated by robots. I need to wash. I need to wash. I have too much thing in my mouth. So yeah, you walk in and the front counter is all automated and there's like robots, specifically dino dinosaur robots there. They, they have like a bronchiosaurus and like a raptor <laughs> and they're just like, they, they're they just like standing there and they like speak to you. And they're like, welcome to the hotel. You know, they speak in multiple languages. They know. They like while with the while when we walked in, they said "Welcome to the hotel" in Japanese, English, Chinese, and Korean. I think. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And there's like a little screen where you automatically log in, and there there was a guy you, we could push a button if we were having trouble, and we were having trouble, so that you could push a button. And there's a guy that came out from behind the curtains and was like, "Hey, I'm 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 I am the overseer of the robots." But yeah, there was two the two they had two robots and like a robot la robot dinosaurs and a robot lady. So it was pretty cool, and they and the whole like lobby of the hotel was like like jungle jungle themed, so that was pretty cool. A little upsetting that the dinosaur that the um, dinosaur robot theming didn't extend to the hotel to the rooms. The rooms were like pretty basic, but like well whatever. So yeah, that was cool. That was also like the night I only got like two hours of sleep because I had to share a room with my sister and uh, my mom's fling's son, <laughs> who were, like. I, I like, but, like, they're not good sleep mates. Like, one snores, one, like, like, they make a lot of noise, you know, so it was, uh, it was fine. But, uh, so I only got, like, two hours of sleep because I just couldn't sleep. And I was also, like, because, like, I was separating, I was having this, the, the vacation was coming to an end and I was going to separate from my family for another, like, s seven months. So I was a little, like, anxious, too. So, like, yeah, I didn't get a lot of sleep. <laughs> so, you know, it's fine. Uh, it was hard, so that's the, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So January 5th was the last day. Uh, we, we checked out. We went to the airport. There was They had a shuttle from the hotel to the airport, and then when we got to the gate of the airport, I was like, okay, I'm going to head back. I'll, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys. We'll talk on, on the phone later, and we'll see each other back in uh, summer. I'm planning summer. And, uh, yeah, they, they started crying. Several family members started crying. <laughs> So, uh, you know, but that was like the first time where like, where we're, like we've, we meet up for a little bit and then separate. So like, it's understandable that people got a little emotional, but hopefully from here on, it'll get easier. And I'm planning on seeing them again. Like I, I talked to them on um, food, food text and food, like uh voice chat, like all the, or like Skype all the time. Cause my mom still uses Skype. <laughs> And I don't know what else you'd use, other, like, other than Discord, maybe. But, like, I don't know. Discord for family seems weird. <laughs> and I don't want my family knowing my Discord. Anyway, uh, yeah. And we'll see each other again in uh, probably August, July or August. I'm planning to go back to America for three weeks during the summer break. Because, again, I, don't, I wouldn't have any classes to teach, so why not? <laughs> why not just take uh, some vacation days and then go back? Because, like, if... 
Because if class is not in session, I still have, like, I still have to work at the office. I still have to show up, like, eight hours a day. <laughs> but there's just nothing for me to do a whole a lot of the time, so it's really boring. So any time I can use vacation days during that time is perfect. So that's my plan, to save up some vacation days and do that. But, uh, yeah, so then, but, yeah, so it was very, very emotional, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll handle it. You know, it'll get easier from here on out. So, and we're going to see each other soon again anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> and then, so, yeah, so I, I saw my family off at the airport, and then I took a train from the Narita airport to Tokyo Station, and then I took a Shinkansen from Tokyo Station to Fukushima Station. And that was like 80 bucks and it took like two and a half hours. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. It took like four hours to drive there. But like to get back, it was like two hours on the Shinkansen. It was expensive, but you know, definitely worth the, the time that I saved. So then I went back. So then I got back here. I finally got back to my place and I did some laundry just to get me by for a week and then slept for 11 hours. <laughs> and then I had, and that was Sunday. And then I had to wake up after 11 hours and go to work on Monday. <laughs> So it was a little tough, so that's why uh, I've I have a I have a three day weekend here because of a, there's another holiday or something, <laughs> or actually I think it's I think it's no what a day is I think it's like Children's Day or something. Anyway, there's a three day weekend, so that's why I'm uh, this this is my rest time, you know, because uh, I'm just resting for the moment, you know, because I've had an, an insane couple of weeks. <laughs> But uh, overall, yeah, it was fun. Uh, like that was it. That's that's the that's the vacation. That's everything I have to say. I should I need to start cleaning up. But I will say that uh, yeah, I need this needs to go in the trash actually. These cookies. Nom, 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 nom. Anyway, focusing now. <laughs> focusing now. I have AD, I have ADD and autism. That's a that's not a, that's a very dangerous combination. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it was uh yeah trip overall went really good very happy with how it went it was fun to be a translator it was fun to show them our town or it was fun to show them my town i don't know who we are me and herbert or me and my daughter <laughs> i don't know it was fun to show them my town the place that i live you know be like a local guide and a translator you know but uh the so yeah overall it was really good and a lot of days were like packed full of like fun stuff like the fox village and the Cat Island was like the best parts, I think, and all the the food, like showing them the conveyor belt sushi, you know. So like that was all good, and I liked all the souvenirs that I bought, you know. Like I just have a pile of them here now that I need to now I need to reorganize and fix. But uh, so I could, but like the only thing I could say that we could improve is um two major things is a um Tokyo could have gone better because Tokyo is already like super stressful, but also and like crowded and packed but like in addition everything was closed and everything was even more crowded and packed than usual so like we couldn't really do a whole lot in tokyo so like yeah and I, like if we ever if they ever come back to do another japan trip definitely not over a national holiday <laughs> like definitely not during that or during golden week I've, I've learned my lesson i'm i'm finding something to do for golden week which is another like week where the entire country has off like in may i think either april or may I think it's like the very end of April, the first like bit of May, that week. <laughs> but uh, so I'll find something else to do in that week. <laughs> so other than go out and do something, because uh, yeah, it gets really crowded. Another thing that could have gone better is food, because we had a lot of picky eaters when we were doing food, and uh, the issue wasn't that just that we had picky eaters. I think the issue is that we weren't willing to separate. Because I think if we were willing to like be like, okay, you go here for food, you go here for food, and we'll meet back up after. Because we did that once, and it went really well during the Sendai place, where um, where me, my my uh, mom, and her fling went to the beef tongue place, and uh, my sister and uh, the the fling's son went to uh, the vegan place, the vegan ramen place. Like that worked out really well, and then we met back up afterwards. Although that was still kind of difficult, because like. Nobody had phones, so, like, it was really difficult to separate because, like, we basically, like, had my phone that works in Japan, and we had, like, a, somebody had a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, like, but if you didn't have my phone or were near that Wi-Fi hotspot, it was hard. So, we could basically only split up into groups of two people. But, like, I think we should have done that more because I think that would have worked out a lot better because people are really picky about what they want to eat. So, I think it would have been better if we're, like, okay, 
for dinner, we're just going to separate. Like, we're going to spend all day together, and we're going to spend as much time as we can together. But, like, for dinner, we're just going to separate and then meet back up after, you know? I think that we should do that in the future. But, uh, yeah, and also not go to... So, yeah. So, those are two fixable problems. Don't go to Tokyo during the holidays and uh, split up to eat. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I just have a, a little bit of extra stuff for future things I'm going to be working on. I'm... Working on a car, I really want a car. Uh, it's not easy to get a car, but I really want a car because it will open up a lot of stuff because it's really hard. Like in Tokyo, you can take a train anywhere and it takes like 20 seconds. But like if I, there's a, like a, a couple of Smash tournaments that are happening in Fukushima and Sendai and a car would be like super easy to go, but taking public transportation, it would get really expensive and take a long time. So yeah, but, and also there's just places that public transportation can't get you like if there's not if it's not on a train line or you've a bus line then it's like gets a lot complicated so i want a car and that will open up a lot of things for me so uh yeah that'll that'll be helpful it's just not easy getting a car i'll probably talk about that next time on the on the uh japan story times i forgot the name of the show for a second <laughs> so uh yeah I, i'll probably talk about it uh because I, i'm like a little hesitant to talk about buying a car because for some reason like buying a car everybody has their own opinions on and but like every situation is different so i'm worried that like i'm gonna talk about like okay here here's the like after i'm done buying a car be like okay here's the car that i bought here's the reasons why i bought it and why like people are gonna be like oh you shouldn't have done that you shouldn't like i'm wor i'm worried you know because <laughs> people that i've talked to about this car about my process of buying a car so far have been very opinionated <laughs> And uh, it's very difficult to like have to get good opinions from other people from outside sources because every situation is different, especially my situation with being a foreigner in Japan. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and so like nobody wants to sell me a car because they're worried that um, I don't know what they're worried about. They're, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna le like. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna like. I don't know. I'm gonna leave without paying off the car, and then they won't be able to track me. Like if I give them my social security number, they will be able to track me to the ends of the earth. Like I will talk about that next time. This is a happy episode. <laughs> so I want a car and, uh, I want to be more sociable basically, which a car will help with, you know, I'll be able to go to smash tournaments and make some more friends. I want to make more friends with the, the people around me. And, uh, I also want to, I want to, this is a little bit more, not necessarily. I'm trying to like get this. Okay. <laughs> This is not necessarily like Japan related. It's a little bit more personal, but uh, I do kind of want to try uh, dating because uh, mostly because I'm I'm bored a little. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's not really because I'm bored, but like I want more. I'm I'm bored because I don't have any social connections. So I want to try making more social connections, and I think trying to start dating is one of them. So uh, I'll s I'll tell you how that one goes down. But you know, situations change all the time. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Nothing super set in stone. I, ha I have some goals that I want to do about I want to make friends and I want to do things with the car. But, like, things change all the time. So I'll, I, ha I, have a I have a plan and I'm willing to be flexible on the plan. I'm getting way off. I'm getting to 20 different segments. But this that video has been two and a half hours. So, again, I try not to make these super long. But they just end up being long because I don't do them frequently enough, I guess. But, uh, yeah, no, no, I hope you enjoyed uh, I had a very, I had a very fun trip and, uh, I had a very fun trip and I'm very sad that it's over, but I have a, a lot of plans in the future. You know, <laughs> I have a lot of things that I want to, I want to do in the future. I have a big plan. So, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to continue working on the plans. So, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one because I'm going to go work on plans and you all are going to do whatever you're going to do because now you're done watching this video or you can watch it again. Do you want to watch it again? You can watch it again. Think about that one. I'm good. I'm calm. I'm calm. Don't worry about me. I'm just I'm just slightly losing my brain because I've just rattled on for two and a half hours by myself. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily used to doing that. But, uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.